There is actually a fire extinguisher in tier 3, but currently the fire extinguisher bits out fire. That's probably not ideal. No. Hi, right, Dean. Dean. Dean has a proposition for you about answering questions for the game. I will answer questions, but you have to give me a motorbike. <laughs> I'll give you a motorbike, uh, but you have to give me a Lamborghini. <laughs> That's Actually, I have, I have, a, I have a spare one at the moment. I have right. a spare one. Okay, um, deal. I've got the same. I just saw. You, you, didn't you have a while ago? I saw on your Instagram. You have that uh, the Ducati Technic Lego thing. I actually oh, yeah, got that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. There's a there's a company in New Zealand that makes lighting kits for them. Oh what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Um, oh, so yeah. Oh god, you pissed off. Oh, you have to have it. <gasps> that looked cool. <laughs> that looked really cool. <laughs> they slid along the floor. I was watching this uh, German VTuber play and um, a bear chased them. Uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. I, w I won't give any spoilers, but yeah, it was, it was quite funny what happened. But oh, there's bears in this? Yep. There's bears and ghillie suits. Oh my oh, word. Oh, did you see the body break? Go and punch the body with like any any things. Do you need the bones? Right, yeah. Uh... It's for arrows and that. But yeah, we have three biomes at the moment in this map. All we've done is actually just mask off this area. So the whole rest of the map is actually loaded. Um, But uh, yeah, as we go on the beta weekends, we'll open it up more. It's just we need to feedback and to test the bugs and the easy one. Yeah, you yeah, guys yeah. have already found, found plenty of bugs. Luckily, the central service held up real well. I don't think it's gone above eight percent utilization yet. Wow, oh, that's good. This actually Dean Hall it is, yeah. He's in chat. He'll see you. Oh, wolf. Shot in the head. Oh. Nice. How do I cancel arrow? Scroll. Switch. I you can push R as well. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that until one of our programmers told me yesterday. <laughs> Do you find an arrow show up yet, sir? No. Can you kill yourself? Theoretically, yes. Because this actually uh, physics. This does not have a TTL, like it's going to die up in the sky. Um. I'm not sure. We don't give it a lot of energy, oh, really? so you know that's why you notice a bit of arrow drop. They don't have like a super crazy amount of velocity. Oh, break! There's like flare arrows if you ever get lost and you need to like show your position to teammates. If you remember the old ones in DayZ where you fire like a, a flare up into the sky and it falls down on a parachute, it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's oh, well that's cool. cool. Yeah. Is that high level stuff? That? Not really. You'll have it in the next hour. As okay. an example of uh, how we were able to add content, the day before we were mastering the build, we added the poison arrows. So we focused a lot of time on the architecture. Um, and that was why we wanted to focus the beta weekends simple and focused um, so that we knew everything works before we started flooding it with content. Right. I just feel like it's a big problem that survival games tend to make and, and I've made in the past with survival games. You, you have to get the foundational stuff right. Yeah. So I, I've been asked this a lot by everyone, and I have a, a rudimentary understanding of the overall gameplay loop of the game. Mm -hmm. Is it correct that like you go down to a biome, you can handle, you progress, then you go back up to the space station, then you can come back in a different biome or a different Rockship area? Simulator. More... Yeah. So we we take the map. Um, so we're producing many maps. Um, and, uh, you know, this is the first map. We call it Olympus. So as the game opens up, you might actually be able to see Olympus from where you are. Olympus is this big towering mountain beside the Arctic biome. And, um, yeah, so basically it's, um, there's multiple biomes all across that map. When you play a prospect, it's as if we've rolled, uh, like a dice on that map. 
um, so it becomes a prospect. Because there is a randomization of resources, there's randomization of cave openings, and a whole bunch of other things. And your objectives, like where the exotics are that you might be mining, or where um, effect, whatever your mission is, and stuff like that. So you can't play that exact instance of it again. Um, right. But you can go back down and do like a new instance of it. And there's a whole bunch of other things and you don't sort of ruin it by telling people what it is. But, but essentially the idea is you play a game like Ark or Minecraft or something like that. And at the end of your session, it kind of was just all lost. And we, we sort of wanted to have that idea that you'd sort of progress over time. And that's, I guess, where we started. So we've started out with Oh dear. This oh particular dear. kind of drop, and the idea is that we'll layer in different ones. Right. Thanks into the sea. Um, I cannot craft a roof yet. Oh, I can now. You could use the floor. Okay. I, got right. I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh. Do I need four of these? And, Zach, I have to say, you were wasting your blow pump points yesterday. Oh. Four of them? Yeah. You were just you were just spamming that. I was like, where's the sack strats? That's <laughs> because I knew that after 20, I can't get any more. No, do you know what it was? I, I could see in your eyes. It was that darn have... ghillie suit. You had target fixation. You can't put a ghillie suit in a game and not expect me to wear it. You're out of your mind. Also... Also, in, in our dev chat, someone said, why is he going around? He's just killing everything. You were just slaughtering every animal that come along for experience. Yeah, get a thousand points of headshot. It was <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> so uh, if you want to replace something, um, break, you can look at it and push Y. Um, I think one of your panels has rotated the wrong way. Oh, yeah, okay. I see that. No now. shade. Um, so building like oh, that's so really good roof. when you get to the alpine biome because snow will accumulate on your roof. Um, but if it's angled, it accumulates a lot less. So, okay, that's yeah. a good point. I don't have, I don't have sort that out. Um, and you can actually craft out of your inventory. Oh, if you hold down R, you'll get a different variation. Like the other angle of it. Oh, yeah, okay. Is that right now? Yeah, I got it. I got it. And you kind of build off stuff. I think you need the other on oh, Yeah, that was the right one. Is the roof the wrong way, wrong, wrong way around, or...? No, no, that one's fine. Okay, yeah. I get it. I need that window now, right? Slash window. I've never got one. Oh, Six of them. So Shannon rang the, the poison dude, and we're like, I dug eight some of the poison. It's like, what poison? And like, poison on the traps. He's like, oh, that's almond flour because it attracts the mice. So we just rushed Jeffrey to thingy and then he was forced to vomit with charcoal paste or whatever. And it was just fucking almond. It had to be safe. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, nice. You've got another little. <laughs> I bet he was like, what's the big deal? What are you guys doing? I just had some almonds. <laughs> Look, bloody love almonds. <laughs> never going to do that again. He'll smell almonds and be like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Flashbacks. Pavlovian conditioning him to not eat almonds. <laughs> Honestly, I'm actually really impressed with the level of care that Break has taken with building this building compared to the ramshackle one that you just built yesterday. Hey, did you see my castle extension to that thing? It was dope. Oh, yeah. two sorry, two sorry castle. Yeah, the hour first. Oh my god. I might actually. I might, I might uh, build a campfire and show break what it looks like when people it, fuck up. Your your eyes were just a ghillie suit the whole time. You just had ghillie obsession face. You you fucked up the second you told me there was a ghillie suit. I did nothing <laughs> but level up to get a ghillie suit. Just In like, a development meeting when we were talking about what to do with the Arctic biome, I literally bought up. We cannot make this game if you can't make a cup of tea. I'm like, I will lose friendships over it. So, <laughs> you've been working on it. Good. Yeah, uh, I woke up this morning. You guys must have played last night when I was asleep. Yeah. Uh, I woke up this morning to a clip of someone's house burning down and everybody panicking, not knowing what to do. 
Sequisha was hitting his house with a with a, a pickaxe or something. Oh, those, yeah. 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 Did you see the uh, gassy um, Burke burnt their house down? No. That was pretty funny. I was told about that. I've not seen it though. It's pretty funny. Uh -huh. Are we sealed in now? Actual sealed unit. Hog. I can open this, right? A wolf outside. I missed! I missed again! Don't jump through the window. <laughs> oh! Oh, I messed up. Oh, is he, is he smashing the wall down? Oh, the wolf smashing his way into the building! Just watching it. Pulling my arrows out of him so I can shoot him because I haven't got any more. Hey, yeah. He's like a he's like a damn porcupine. <laughs> he's got that many arrows in him. Did I just stamp on his head then? I don't know what I did. I shot <gasps> him in the back. I did yeah. Thank God for that. I, I was literally pulling my knives out of his back while he was chasing you. <laughs> I didn't know he could ruin my house that I've just built. Oh no. That's lovely that. But I need to Must repair. Oh. Oh, how do I repair it? You build a repair hammer, it's in your schematics. Oh yeah, okay. Oops, I'll tabbed. What have I done? What have I done? I can't click on anything. Uh, I don't know. If you press like B uh, or O or whatever, does it bring up the recipe? Okay, I got it. Oh, yeah, I think it's that weird thing you get sometimes doing a full screen game when it's like you have to click, yeah. click, click to focus on it. Thanks, Tim Sweeney. That's Sweeney. Okay, yeah. so I need to craft this. Stick it on my hotbar. I, I met him once. Can you make it so that when you got one. skin an animal, it automatically takes out all the arrows? I could, but that's casual talk. Oh, am I filthy casual now? Yeah. <laughs> you're, sh you're getting casual in your old age. Sometimes like, when you like hit an animal in its underbelly though, and it rolls on the its... old, the know. old sacral. Actually, you know what I did say was we should put them in the car and uh, in the inventory, yeah, to collect from. We did talk about that actually. Yeah. Because sometimes they're just not accessible. Like they're clipped inside the stag's body or whatever. I need to eat. I'm dying. The old sacral would have been like, you have to snipe the arrows out of his body from a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, I'm bleeding to death. I should probably learn bandage. I think I got like seven things out of watching your stream that I put on our list. What's okay. number one? Don't let this idiot play my game. <laughs> no. Do I have to put this down here? Yeah. A bunch of things. Five. You used to give Timber Fox a raise. He was in my chat towards the end helping Ooh. with some, some end game stuff. Oh, yeah, he's cool. been pretty awesome. That's in a long camera. road. Yo, break and chat. I'm hiding to playing this super fun game, my buddy. Break, break himself. It was. There was. Uh, half like, uh, Jesus. We, we did a lot of work on vehicles, but then we realized, man, we, we really need to get the foundations right first. Break, read, and chat, Monk W. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm off bikes for a while at the minute. I heard. It's fine by me. There's no bikes. I'm uh, I'm in lockdown. We we our whole country was put into a full like stay at home lockdown the week we're preparing to master this game. Yikes! Wow. I've got one and a half days snowboarding in this year. That's it. What's the point of living if you can't snowboard? I know, right. 
I think I'm just a big pansy. I don't get the whole. I might like, too. Shit. Extreme sports. I'm not very good at it. I'm too old. How old are you? But I like it. It's good fun. I just turned 40. Wow. Yeah, that's old. I know. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> We're close. We're, I'm, I'm 36. What, what are you, Sack? 38. 38. 40 is the new 30, right? Exactly, yeah. Oh, there's loads of stakes. Are you still in a really good physical shape? Yeah, I think so. I got this amazing trainer named Fawad. Um, he's actually originally from Afghanistan, but he's he's here in New Zealand. He's I reckon he's New Zealand's best personal trainer. He won like the uh, Olympia thing, um, weightlifting thing. He's amazing, and um, he I usually go see him every day. But because of lockdown at the moment, I can't. I was gonna say, are you still able to go to the gym? I have a whole bunch of gym equipment in my apartment, but it's not quite the same as having the trainer there with you. Yeah, yeah, you don't get pushed as much, do you? And you mm. might give up before you normally would with a trainer and stuff. You turned 38 today. Oh, happy birthday. Feels birthday, I've man. I've been going for runs, though, so it's been nice to get some more cardio on. Oh, God. Whatever did that has ruined my mouse sense. Oh, no, I'm back now. Okay. It, like, went to, uh... We went to like desktop and then not desktop. Hey, slower. I'm 40 dating a 23 year old. 40 is definitely the new 30. Jesus. Congrats, slower. Long time not see, by the way. That'd be good. Uh, my O2 is getting low. What, what do I do to fix that? Have you got Oxide? The, the blue. No, I've, stuff. I, no, no, no. Is that the only way to do it? Yeah, to go and yeah, get but, Oxide? But yeah, come in here a sec. I have to build something. See this okay. thing here? I can put my oxide into this. And then see that balloon? It turns the oxide into oxygen and puts it in a balloon that grows. And then you click on the balloon to consume it. But this ah, is more efficient okay. than just putting it in your suit. And then later on, you get higher, higher, higher level tech stuff that's like way more efficient. Okay. So you should be able to, we need to fill that up basically. What is going on with my, what is that that's hanging out on the right hand side of me? Arctic's my favorite biome by far. It would be. I saw you play RimWorld. You used to do those, bite, those like, night, those, uh... Been a minute since Twitch, so we have to eat the best. Thanks, I hope life's good, man. Talking about working out, break. You see me, these have, I've been doing, uh, lunges, mate. Lunges? Yeah, look. Our lunges, bud. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? That looks cool, to be fair. The animations are pretty slick in this already, I must the say. Fair. The fair, yeah, it? we're we're re we're not super happy. We had a lot of trouble with the characters, um, which is why we haven't got a lot of customization in. The physics seem pretty realistic as well. I love the yeah. ragdoll when you when you hit a charging animal and it like face plants into the floor and slides a meter or two. That yeah. was amazing. Yeah, actually, our, our character director, our character and animation director, Ronald, is from uh, X Funcom, um, and uh, so you know he worked on like Conan Exiles and stuff. His, if you look at his past games, you're just like, oh my god, he just happened to end up in New Zealand, um, like because his wife wanted to go there, and so this this guy just rocks into the studio one day, it's like, oh yeah, I've made all these insane games, and we're like, please come work for us. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all right. My thing's gonna burn back there, yeah. If you come over to where I am, break this actual oxide yeah, boulders my, uh, yeah. that are really big. So we need to mine these and go take it back to that thing. In the meantime, you can just right click and consume it. That's so in addition. We're gonna make okay. some of the more advanced ones require the more advanced tools. Uh, if you've looked through the tier three and tier four, um, like you know, titanium and stuff like that. Mm. Is there any end game tech that's like you make like a server farm that has like a certain amount of computing power to, to run high level tech? Uh, if you look in tier 4 you can see sort of the first uh, parts of it. So at the edge of the planetary tech tree it starts to lend with the exotic tech tree which is in the space one. 
and right. basically like electricity, um, fabricators, um, you know, assault weapons, sniper rifles, stuff like that. Okay, even is that had going a drone, on? Um, it's going like on, right? Prototype for a while, but that's not confirmed. Like a quadruped. Yeah, like a little one that can you know move resources. Cause you know we sort of want it to be a little bit like satisfactory. You know, it becomes about throughput. Yeah. Um, efficiencies and stuff. You know, one of the funnest things to do is to build a, is build bridges because you start to learn about the structure system. Oh, has Break got DLSS turned on? Oh, he does. I hate performance. I just have it on balanced. Oh, I click on. Are you on high or epic, Break? He's on high. I need to... Well, he's just changing his frame limit. Yeah, I'm trying to change my FLV. Oh yeah, you can change like 100, it's in there. Under gameplay, yeah. I, I yeah, hate I that we it. default it to 60. Did it stay out? Did it save oh, that then? Yeah. people who play on tiny monitors. Might even do 103, like PUBG. Okay, that feels bad. Hey, Lamad! Just the, yeah, I do, just like the tip. 10, oh, that's so much better. Yeah, way so better, right? Is there um, I don't know if you said this before, actually. Is there an actual end game goal? Are you looking to escape something? Are you looking to build a ship? Are you looking? Or, or yeah. Is it... So, so you're at, the drop you're doing right now will be called uh, an experience drop. I wanted to call them an acclimatization drop. So if you imagine, it's kind of like when you're in the military, right? You deploy somewhere, you, you do some acclimatization. So you go, go out into the area and stuff like that. So you've gone down onto the planet and your aim is to sort of level up, figure out how to live in the safe area and stuff like that. Once you get to level 10, you uh, can start getting faction missions, which will start bringing in, I think it's like Beta Weekend 6 or something. Maybe Beta Weekend 5. And that's like a mission with a goal. Like it might be recover this down satellite or build this particular kind of building at a specific location. That kind of stuff. Then um, once you get even higher, you end up being able to do exotic missions. Which is where you go in and you have to find exotics, mine them and take them back to your dropship and leave. Which is why you don't want to... Yeah. You can take stuff down from orbit so that you can use those exotics to make awesome stuff. Vehicles, vehicle parts, uh, better tools that you can actually take back and forth with you. Okay. So basically it's about progressing you, progressing your equipment and the stuff you have so that you can go down and do cooler missions and more advanced stuff and things like that. Gotcha. Hmm. But you can only fit so much in your dropship. Right, yeah, yeah. Are they upgradable? Do they change, or...? Yeah, we actually have a dropship builder in, but what we realized when we did a lot of this stuff, it, it was just too much for people to figure out at once, you know? Yeah. So we actually, now, we actually just make you a default dropship and send it down. So we're still sort of... I guess that was the problem, when you have a big game that you want to do, Trying to teach everybody that all at once gets really difficult. Yep. And that's where these beta weekends kind of help us because oh. we're like, okay, your job is just to survive in this. Get them forest biome. Um, let's see how people play. Can they figure out this? Um, stuff like that. Uh oh. And with like, you said then sniper rifles and stuff? Um, are they just for PvE stuff? I'm guessing like things are going to get more serious than just wolves and stuff then. So I'm going to admit something and I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for it later. But oh um, we, we, we originally had this uh, plan and uh, as like COVID happened and a whole bunch of other things happened, we kind of got a bit distracted from it. And what happened was we forgot to do a bunch of what I'd call multiplayer hygiene tasks. And one of them uh, was restricting who can join your session. And that was why at the last minute we were like, oh my goodness. Um, 
anyone can join your session because all your sessions were up. And realistically, there's actually no difference between the, the difference between PVE and PVP is us just saying the game is PVE. You can shoot people, you can um, loot their corpses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just look at each other. Yeah. <laughs> it was a moment. Um, but yeah, you know, we're, we're still figuring out. Archery I guess, challenge. What... Let's try and hit each other across the way. Like... Right. So is the game, has the game got potential to do PvP stuff then? Yeah. So uh, uh, that's the kind of, for me, that's the advantage of what, what I call that session based survival. Session based survival means that we can do a lot of things in your session that we otherwise couldn't. We don't have to say exactly what the game is all the time. So if we take, um, you know, sex, uh, you know, drama in their game yesterday, their building caught fire and the trees started catching fire. In a normal survival game, you couldn't burn down every tree on a map because you'd ruin that person's whole play experience. But when it's yeah. uh, session based, you can do that. So we get to do a lot of crazier stuff. And there's, I guess, in future, nothing is stopping us from being able to say, okay, here's a PvP survival um, session type. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I've been re-watching The Expanse. Um, oh, so uh, good. And, uh, you know, it's kind of an example there. You know, they're kind of at war. They're kind of not at war. Uh, stuff like that. And just the different experience that they have. But what I've learned is we're still figuring this out a bit, which is why the beta weekends became really important. We've got to nail this experience that you guys are playing right now, then layer in the storms, then get the different biomes working that are fairly Earth-like, and, and then we can do the crazy stuff. Oh, okay, and, I get it. Yeah. I can't say too much about it, because we've got to, got to make sure we can get it all done before we before we do. But Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's about getting... It's what we didn't do with DayZ. Like, you've got to get the foundational stuff right. Yeah, no, I get that. It's got to play right. Um, so so there's potential you make there. Sure you've got all the, um, you know, um, anti sort of hacking type stuff and all that sort of stuff sorted. You've got to get everything done before you say, "Hey, our game's." Doing the, this so like, are the session based? When you say session based things, do you mean like raids in Tarkov, kind of thing? Yeah. Like when it's session based, I yeah, I think I prefer this to like full open world stuff now and having to log out and 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 whatnot just like on, on a tangent i think for some reason i prefer the session based kind of but still having the freedom and open world aspect to it like it's something that i've started to really enjoy more than just complete open world log in log out uh, and all that kind of stuff it's nice to be I like agreed. rewarded at the end of the session and see what you did and see what you would like you feel like you've achieved something Especially when Daisy's not really got any end goal, so to speak. Like, and it's you feel like I you've achieved the session. You're exactly right, and and I realised that when I when I really watched PUBG for the first time, it was this maturing of the concept, right? Mm. And I I think that if you look at Daisy, it was kind of sort of childlike in that. Yeah, it was this cool idea, but it didn't really do anything with it, which is perhaps a good metaphor for the the whole project, really. But, um. Uh, you know, you take that and you wrap some structure around it and you get this session. Um, mm. We are still figuring out what those sessions can be. That's the challenge. And that's why everyone's like, why isn't there aliens? Why isn't there this and that? We didn't want to do that right at the start because we wanted to be real careful. You, you know, we've got to get it right. Um, and so we started with the familiar and then the idea is you can sort of take people in the directions that make sense. And that's what, you know, like you say, that's what that session-based stuff does. You can you can do stuff without screwing people's game um, because they'd be starting a new session to experience some other content. Yeah, well, that's a benefit, right? Instead of, like, saying this server wipes and all that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. ruining someone's potential, like, two or three months, it's just raids. Everything's more simple. Hey, Cal. Yeah, it's Dean. You you remember Dean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't do a great job early on explaining to people this whole idea of session-based survival. Um, you know, we were like, you've got an hour. You go in and you go do it. But there's nothing technically that says we can't. That's why we've made these sessions 20 days. It's like we could make the sessions however long we want. Yeah. Um, 
It's just we recognize that we want you to go down, do some stuff, and then leave. You know, have an adventure, do some stuff. But we need to be able to we need to be able to present you some really awful challenges. Have terrible things happen. Have a hurricane come through and destroy your whole building. Like we, we need to be able to do stuff like that to make Oh an my adventure. god, I thought someone was yeah. flying over me. You could do some interesting stuff like have resources that once they're mined, they start to decay. So you can't just like land, mine the first chunk of exotics you find and then just piss about for an hour. You're kind of encouraged to do almost speed runs to get the maximum yield. All sorts of exciting shit. Writing that one down, that's a really good idea. No limits, but yeah. yeah, no, uh, absolutely. And, um, yeah. But, you know, I do need to acknowledge that we're still figuring the session-based thing out. Um, yeah, we've sort of been figuring out the game out overall. It's oh been an idea that, that I, that's knocked around since I first demoed Daisy Standalone at Gamescom and realized it was... Uh, I don't I have the ability problems. to make arrows. And, um, and I'm so, not you know, I started doing a thought experiment about what we could do to get around. You know, what would a project look like if you got around those? The, the whole thing as well, it, it stops maybe server or degradation as well, like... Exactly. When everybody built a yep. billion bases on a server, and then it, the server was just really bad. You know, the performance was really bad. Was really bad and you can tell straight away. With session, it's like it gets rid of that, right? And or eases that up so, a little bit. So that was one of our um, five pillars um, for this design, and it was the pillar is uh, it's the game scales really well. So and that applies both technically with exactly what you're talking about server degradation, as well as. Um, sort of technical inflation so sometimes with these survival games you people want more content and you have to add the content on mainly at the end of the game and it's all in the if it's all in the session you kind of ruin it um and that's what arc feels a bit like with me you know it's your t-rex is walking around with lasers on the head or dodo's dropping um you know birthday cake and or unicorns and stuff like that uh those are real things. I don't know when you last played Ark. I've not played Ark for a long time, but that sounded like a man having a nervous breakdown. Every single one of those are oh, real shit, things. Oh shit, my old um, two. And, uh, um, but by sessionizing it, you could be as rich as Elon Musk in orbit, but you can only take a certain amount of stuff down with you, so you have to make choices. And to me, that's what a survival game, whether PvE or PvP, it's about choices. That's a good way to put it. You know, the reason that PUBG is interesting is because you're Ooh. watching people make choices about where they are and what they do. Um, or a Tarkov, you know. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's Rocket. So this is Dean Hall. Uh, the, uh, the, the guy that came up with the idea of Daisy Mod. Um, oh, God. Oh no. You bastard. You're on fire. <laughs> fire up, Ray! <laughs> he's a wha here's a whacker. Get whack him. Uh, oh, left click. No, I, I'm gonna. That looks really cool. And I can repair this now, yeah? Yeah. So again, that's, that's not something you can really do if it's not sessionized. You know, we partition off the experience and we can do crazy things with it. Like burn your whole house down. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. So it is energy based, so it's harder to set it on light from the outside than it is getting inside because it heats the temperature up. How cool does that look? Oh yeah, I'm severely overheating with this shit. Oh it's my even word. better if you're running epic. Vandal. Oh, you're ruining my ass. 
you. Oh, that is spreading way too quick. <laughs> feed the dogs. I know, I know, I know, I know. I will. I'll feed them, I'll feed them. I'm watching Sacril burn my house down right now. One of my favorite things to do is build bridges though. Oh yeah, can you do that over the water? Yeah. Yep. And, and it becomes a big thing with vehicles. Oh, Gary, right. Gary, okay, Gary, yeah. Gary, 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 <laughs> Gary, 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 Gary. Feed the dogs, you bulb. <laughs> Thank you. I will do. I will. Can you craft me some arrow sack? I don't have a uh, the skill tree unlocked yet. Uh, yeah. There's some arrows here on the floor. Did they drop? Yeah, here at my feet. Thanks. I'm guessing like this is gonna be. I think there's actually a bug with the pillars map. when they catch on fire. It seemed to be a lot harder to put out. We were discussing it um, in the dev team yesterday. So chat are asking, uh, are there any plans for like scripted hostile events? It's hard because I don't want to give too much away because the whole idea of it is you're, after the beta's over, you're going to be the first cohort. So um, you're supposed to be the first people going down to experience stuff. But I guess to a certain extent, you do need to tell people what's coming because you just look at it and you're like, what, it's space people walking around with, um, with stone. Um, you know, I, I, the idea is to try and take a little bit of Tarkov and I guess a little bit of uh, Ark and and a, quite a bit of Skyrim. And that's why when we played Valheim, we're like, oh yeah, we get it. You know, we're trying to get that Skyrim atmosphere, but give you this sort of more organic uh, environment to play in for you know either a few hours or twenty days. Um, so yeah, you know we're, we're wanting to pull You're in. Still some alive, of that stuff. mate. What is the challenge to catch you're here you. to do? What Hope you're well and getting creeped for eight months. We have to layer those soon. in real carefully because hey, big this weather stuff, this fire stuff, we need to see how that goes well, in a session before we chuck in freaking dragons or something, you know. So um, yeah, we're still sort of figuring a lot, a lot of that out. Okay, I never thought about doing the the boss kind of stuff. Please have the option for. for multiple random biomes to occur at the same time so you can have like a hurricane but then you can have like a flash storm which sets like you know like in Rimworld when lightning <laughs> sets the yeah. forest on fire and then the tornado or the what hurricane up, can go through the fire Thank you've got you, a fire-nado and it can just sweep around setting shit on fire that would be so dope Twat, we actually have what's a funny up Mr. Gashook you and the uh, fam are doing bug, well be uh, when we were developing for a hey, while Desi. and the lightning was constant um, and so it was just Jesus. Uh, lightning bolts coming down on your building and it's just basically just torched and you just see your building explode. It was like oh an God. orbital cannon. What the hell? I think you told me about that. I think you showed me a screenshot or something. Get inside. That would be cool actually. If there was like a way of mining in the game where you set up like a laser designator designations designated station and you aim at like this big All right, feed in the dogs. ball feed of the dogs. ore and it fires like an ion cannon from the station down and we got like, cracks it so you can mine the, mine the inside of it. It'd look cool well, to just know, look, look up into the sky and to see the beam coming. You know me, I can't make a game that doesn't have trains in it. But um, yeah, we, 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 have had some, <laughs> we have had some thought about how to deal with um, when you're mining exotics at a high level because it all becomes about throughput. And I think at that point, that's where we've taken a lot of inspiration from like satisfactory and stuff like that about how we want to approach it you can see some of the ideas of it in that tier 4 tier tree which you know is about um getting into electronics and stuff like that we want to start to think about that stuff but we've got to get the found you know you, you, you can't build a house without foundations and so
so for us and I really believe to make a good survival game you have to get the basics which is chopping down a tree you know killing animals and and mining that has to be super solid before you go and layer stuff on yeah Yeah, it was cool, cool to see you play it. I, I was very nervous watching you, you watching people play it. It's always nerve-wracking when, you know, your game releases. Your whole brain shuts down. Yeah. Well, hopefully that has been assuaded by now. Everyone seems to be loving it. Um, I think that we got a lot of notes. But that's what the beta weekends were about, you know? Yep. We knew we'd go into that. We knew we'd have a lot of notes. And, and I think everyone's really... Uh, Feather dogs motivated to come in and, 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 you know, keep changing everything for the next weekend. Mm -hmm. I had to just feed myself. Sorry, I'm back. Um, how many, um, how often, can you say how often you plan on doing the beta weekends? Yeah, so every two weeks. Uh, okay. You know, we agonized about this internally. What we felt was that we wanted to have enough time. It'll really take us about Alexa, a week to buy go me through all the footage, all the vods, I'm a terrible dog dad. Um, and all the feedback that we've got either while from you're at it, Alexa, get me an auto baby feeder uh, as well. And then another week to sort of plan and you know maybe introduce some changes uh, for the next weekend as well. Uh, the way we have our development system, we have a really com complicated development system. Bow. Our uh, product, <laughs> director of production, which we call Overseer, actually comes from Blizzard. And basically, so we can deploy changes either into the stream that goes into each of the beta weekends or the release stream that comes in November the 20th. So, long, long story short, we can decide how risky a change is, whether we're going to put it in immediately for the beta weekends or put it in for the release. Because, you know, we need to keep everything going. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so every two weeks. Um, so the next beta weekend will not be next weekend, the but the weekend after, and it'll be where we layer in the storms. You know, we take the feedback in and how people have built the buildings. We look at that. Um, and this is why we, we've side. given you. Oh, that's Sorry. cool. Actually, comes back down. It's nuts. Uh, the Germans were actually saying I should put in fireworks. Uh, so we, we're going to do a fireworks one. Was that a sack real wedding? Yeah, oh, your fireworks wow, were insane. Yeah, they they were actually insane. Your fireworks, yeah. Although your cake, man. Oh my god, I actually, I legitimately feel bad. I ate a lot of that. <laughs> Seriously, I did. I ate a lot of that. Yeah, I'll drop some for you. Uh... Did you hear what happened to me in the car? Did I tell you? Should be on the floor there. Hold R to change. No? You know, I'd rented that um, Jag. Yeah. I w drove to Oxford. Jesus. For stuff. And um, I was driving along one of the roads there, and it was a little... It had been raining, and the guy in the rental place oh, had been like, push this button, it's <gasps> way more fun to drive. But I think he oh, told me, nice. or I'd mucked up and pushed off the traction control. And I'm going down the motorway. I can't remember which one it was. And I passed this car. I was like, what are they doing? They're going so slow. And I seriously lost complete control of the car. Did you it's like fish. Oh, no. Yeah, I aquaplane. I was fishtailing back and forward. And I would have been, I was going faster than the speed limit. And I was like, I am, I'm dead. Like, you know, I'm like, if I, you know, I was, it was, it was two motorways were joining. So it was like six lanes or something. Luckily, there was no traffic. And I swear, I went from one side to the other, almost not in control at all. And um, I could see Breaker's wetting himself. <laughs> no, it wasn't funny. It was really not funny at all. I was and, going um, faster than the speed limit. <laughs> I was going well faster than the speed limit. And um, the back of this Jag, um, it was the one of the, the little Jags, you know, the two-seaters. And it... Um, luckily, the thing that saved me was the back of the Jag clipped the median um, barrier thing um, oh, on the right side. Oh, you actually did crash Look, then. Look oh, at me. man, I did. The median. <laughs> no, it, no, it did. Because that, that, that sort of righted the car a bit. Um, and I got control again. 
and I pulled over and I'm like, I was so embarrassed about this, I guess I didn't tell you. And I was like, get it together, Dan. Get it together. Um, and I, Wait, but it was, was driving with this. This was afterwards. Remember after uh, I left? Okay. Yeah, I went to Oxford. I was going to say, it would be funny if you, if you, if you like, arms oh, zip into the shops, Chris, and you fuck up in a jag, and you come back in a Kia. <laughs> <laughs> and I, but I'm, I'm driving along. I'm driving along. And I'm like, what has happened to the back of the car? Why am I still able to it's drive? like in a video game, like in GTA, when the when you start doing that swervy shit. But you were like, oh, oh but man, this time I was, might actually die. It was nuts. Um, and uh, I pull over, and I look at the back, and it wasn't too bad. Um, they obviously make it pretty well, but but I I totally, totally smashed up the panels, but it was still all good. But yeah, I took it back to the rental car place, and I was like, oh, I, you know, um, I was like, oh, I've, I've had an accident, and and the lady was like, oh, it can't have been too bad, you know, you drove it back. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, oh, she's like, it won't be too bad because I've I've been with them heaps. And then she goes out and looks at, it, and she's like. Yeah, you're probably not going to get your deposit back. And I was like, that is fine. You keep the deposit. <laughs> but yeah, the, the message is, don't aquaplane. It was really stupid. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I aquaplaned once in my car. I was driving along a, a highway and it was raining like torrential rain. And there was like forest either side of me. Um, and I was in like the overtaking lane. And then there's this one stretch for like 100 meters where there's no forest either side. And there's a massive crosswind that I didn't know was there because the trees were blocking it. And I literally was just driving along in my lane. And as soon as the tree cover finished, my car just went shh and slid from the overtaking lane to the slow lane. Like literally just one, two, three, just across the lane while without the wheels turning. Just like linearly moved. And I had oh, to turn right. I had to turn back towards the, the overtaking lane just to stay in my lane because the wind was blowing me left. I so had yeah. to steer right to yeah, stay yeah, in my yeah, lane of course, for about five seconds. And then it went back to tree cover and it was back to normal. And I shit my pants. Never, never yeah. I complained. Because I've never gone over the speed limit because I'm a responsible driver. I was just, I was doing like... I get lies. <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> that. You're the most responsible <laughs> motor vehicleist I know, Break. Yeah, yeah. How's your wanking hand? <laughs> Have you seen... In fact, yeah, Dean's watching your stream. Show him the footage of you. Show him the footage of you making a fucking scav death sound from Tarkov. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I can. Go on, Dean, watch there's, this. There's turn his, turn his audio on. It's fucking great. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, dear. I thought that I nearly died. We're all laughing about us nearly dying. This is part of the fun at the moment. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, is it this it? Did you get your deposit back on your bike? Like, you no the, no the deposit. The bike. I can't show you my ass because my ass is my ass and my lower back are all fucked as well from where the back from where the back wheel there is grating on my <gasps> back. There. Is that the slowest it goes? That is rubbish, isn't it? I do I think I do play at full oh speed, my right? God. It's not, it's very oh. innocuous, but it's... God, that could have been even worse. <laughs> oh, Treat man. Treat my mother and sub like a $2 off coupon for your medical bill. Thanks. <laughs> I smashed my goggles to bits. Oh, that's yeah, rough. It hurt a lot. Yeah. Just the ground like, with takes the wind out of you. I was winded. I couldn't can't breathe. Breathe in. Yeah. Has anyone ever? Has anyone ever done? Ever done See, that? that's why you get like, as you get older, you get so much more cautious, a bit right? Squeamish. Yeah. Well, you don't like horrible noises. Except the forty-year-old who always killed himself in a jag. So just. <laughs> I don't know what happened. And, yeah, my, front end just thing I've done. my front end um, just washes out. Oh man, I'm getting second then... hand pain just watching that. Yeah. It's, just, it's a bit chilling when you just like remove the goggles and they're in two pieces. It's like those were on your face. Oh, I just watched that part of the video. You can just feel the weight. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was going to be funny. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> it's no. horrible. Yeah, it's not funny, man. It was the worst part was being winded because I couldn't, I, I didn't know the like you when you crash, you like try and figure out 
if Ooh. what's broke or whatever. And I just couldn't couldn't breathe to stand up to figure out mm. what was broke. So I don't know. I, as long as my feet wiggled, I was like that was what I was concerned about. It's literally when people talk about gritting your teeth, right? You could just tell you were just your you know jaw was tense to deal with the pain. Yeah. Horrendous. No cam is best stream. Hopefully go good physio. No physio. It's just told me to the doctor's just told me to squeeze a, a, a ball for the next few days. Got it. Keep the like. Keep it moving and so it doesn't stiffen yeah. up my finger. Yeah. I found not a lot of people have winded themselves though ever. Have you ever landed on your back and just you weren't able to breathe in? Have you ever, yeah, got, have I you have. ever had that feeling? Yeah. Have. Not a lot of people have experienced that. I have. It's a hot, it's, it's difficult to explain it to someone where you can't Horrific. you can't breathe the first in time or out. I was winded. My I was at my I was at cricket with my dad and I was in the locker room with, the, with the his ball. team <laughs> and one of his like mates for a joke punched me in the stomach like as a joke but he hit me in the solar plexus and it winded me. And I just curled into a ball and I couldn't breathe in for about, it felt like a minute. And I was just like, <gasps> like yeah. trying to breathe in as hard as I could. I thought I was going to die. I, but I couldn't express it because I'd never experienced it before. So you I was can't panicking. Speak. Yeah, it's just can. such you a speak. horrible feeling. Yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't do anything. Never squeeze one ball. Got to squeeze both at once with equal pressure. But yeah, you can literally oh, punch people in the solar plexus to win them. So, so how long ago did that happen, Brick? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks tomorrow. Wow. Yeah, I broke, broke my ribs and I broke my metacarpal. Um, and how, how long, browse, how long out of action? Uh, I think it's six weeks. Six weeks for anything above the waist and 12 weeks for anything below. But obviously, I'm, I broke my leg when I was 16 and that was... That was... Is it 12 weeks? Something Dean, like do you know 12. why he's called break? No. Uh, because I, of that? Yeah, I broke a lot of bones when I was younger riding my bike. But uh, yeah, it's, I think like, it's six and twelve, so six weeks. But age comes into it now, right? Yeah, dirt bike, yeah. That's the thing, like, you always find with, like, motorcyclists who started on dirt bikes, they do know how to fall off. Yeah, that was yeah. what I was always told. Yeah, it's like stuntmen, right? They know how to fall well. That one was so quick, though, and unexpected, I just didn't didn't even expect it, which is why I didn't I didn't even get a chance to put my hands out mm. to break my fall. It didn't even look like you were going, like, fast or risky or anything. It was like, you no, go yeah. in normally, and then boom, you're gone. It's so weird. Yeah. You can feel the weight of you hitting the ground with the camera, though. Yeah. Like, uh, well, the camera's on your helmet, right? And you went head first into the ground. Yeah. It's terrifying. The mount snapped. Everything cracked on it. The GoPro inside was absolutely fine. Just didn't even blink. Shout out to GoPro. <laughs> Hashtag ass. Yeah. I can't Almost killed make... myself. Hashtag ass. I can't believe they make you're cameras gonna get... that strong. You're going to get back on the bike, though, when you're, when you're good. I can't wait to get back on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. you gotta, got to gotta get back on the horse. I had some pretty bad road bike accidents, and uh, after one of them, I, I sort of definitely just gave up for a while, and it was really hard getting back on the bike again. I, I've never been the same since. It's scary. You lose a little bit of confidence and yeah, it'll take a while to get back up to speed, but you know, I've never broken a bone. Have you never? Uh, never. That's crazy. No one in my, no one in my extended family has broken a bone either. Sorry, in my immediate worried? family. I, I wonder this. I wonder this sometimes. <laughs> I think I broke 13 now. What's your goal? I, I had a truck. Um, on my motorbike, or the truck hit me, and it squished my foot, and all the bones in my foot concertinaed up, and it caused horrific tissue damage. And I remember ah. they x-rayed my foot like four or five times because they were like, "You must have fractured something in it," but they couldn't find it. Although I think with some of the foot bones, it can be hard for them to find whether it's fractured. It's a there, they, right? they, they it must yeah. have my bones a bit squishy, so they they sort of bent. But that meant I had I had a lot of tissue damage. Sometimes tissue damage is even worse than, like, any tendons or anything like that. It's worse than a broken bone. I'd rather break. That is exactly that is exactly what they said to me in the army when I uh, sprained my ankle uh, in a tank trap. You know the runnels the tanks make. Um, I uh, I accidentally in, in the dark uh, run into one and um, sprained my ankle real bad. And the doctor was like, "You're gonna wish it was fractured." Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a great doctor. You're gonna wish it was fractures. 
<laughs> reassuring. What are we getting stone for, by the way? Are we just leveling what? up? What's the best yeah, way anything, to level anything, up at the minute? Yeah, anything you do levels you up, save just gathering shit. Okay. We could try and make a bridge, though. I'm down. For a left. Yeah, yeah. I really like building with the stone stuff, but it does take you a while to level here. Okay, I'm gonna Yeah, drop. I just got that towards the end of my last stream. What's copper for? It's mainly used with interior wood building. Um, so interior wood's really efficient for wood, um, but you do need some metal resources. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other furniture that we're going to bring into it, like, you know, chairs and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, okay. Sweet. And then yeah, getting into the tier 3, it's in my uh, and, clips. and particularly the tier 4 uh, recipes uh, have a lot more advanced stuff in them. The trees fall really well, by the way. Yeah. We spent so long on that. Um, but I, I, again, it was like watching that video of you. Like, you, you get a, you can get a sense of weight from watching something, so we wanted it to have weight. They don't damage buildings enough, so I, I think we're going to increase the, the damage um, that they cause when they fall on buildings. Is it? Is there a particular way they fall, or is it all random? Like, if I stand on a certain side of the tree, can they... They, they do give you a bit. Uh, they should push... A okay. little bit away from you, whatever way you're facing. Okay. That's, but it, you know, it can be hillside. affected by wind and stuff like that. Or if you, like, okay. harvest the tree while it's falling, sort of stuff. But yeah, they will damage structures if they fall on them. But uh, we need to increase it a bit. That makes sense. Yeah, Fats, it messed me up, dude. But it's all Rick's good. being like, you are sick Ooh. with animals, but he's just like, tree's gone, tree's gone, tree's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I need a lot of wood, right? Are you building the main strip to it, yeah? Yeah, like the, the struts or whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. Remember, you don't have to like everything about it just because I'm around. You can you can be like, screw this thing. That's what I do when I right play. I'm gonna play your role game break. This is shit, mate. Yeah. What's what have you made here? What's this? A box? Oh, a, st a stone pile. Yeah. yeah so that's like that's like a hundred right, stones, yeah. and then you can just pick it off and use it. I got that. You can do the same thing with wood. So if you press P, if press E, uh, go to tech tree. There's there's one called wood pile. Yeah, and yeah, then let's say you're that. collecting shitloads of wood. You can come back here and just build a bunch of wood piles, and then whoever's building can like pick up the wood efficiently and get working. Okay. Stolen from Valheim, 100%. Played Valheim, <laughs> like there's a really good idea. I'm gonna do one right now, I think. Craft. We didn't right. manage to get the smoke mechanics in though. So I've just oh, learned it. Yeah. How do I how do I drop the wood pile? So now you press O. And it's oh. a recipe you can build, so there'll be like a wood pile in there. Am I so blind? If you press it. Oh, yeah. I've seen it, yeah. Once you can you actually. It, you press G, and then you place it. You can actually start building uh, thing, kits you've made out of your inventory if you just right click and click place. I seem to be like the only one doing that. You can watch everything. What's that? It, you can use the context menu instead of dragging onto the hotbar. I've not even got one now. So what's that? In my inventory? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you, you, you mean you can right-click them and click deploy, right? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've been doing. Hey, this is go. the first time I've not done... Oh, is there a reason this won't place here, Dean? Why not place this wood <laughs> support on the, the floor. earth here? It just explodes. Uh, oh, it might be because it's not... It might I think it doesn't have support. I'm not sure why. Try if you hold oh, down R, you can build a sideways one, and try and build out from one of the other ones first. Oh, I had no idea you could do a sideways one. Yeah, if you hold down R. Oh, that's cool as hell. Um, and see blue. It means it's uh, blue means oh yeah, I'm real supported. I'm like connected with the ground. So Mason did all this. Uh, uh he did like a whole bunch of stuff with like support and can stuff I stack like these? that. Um, and 
Well, I mean, we don't have the vehicles in this build, but cool. you, you drive a vehicle on a bridge and it adds weight. You can actually see this yourself. If you get thatch and you build it out to the point where it's very weak and you go stand on it, um, it can actually be enough to make it collapse. Can so. you hear it creaking and stuff? Like, Oh, yeah, you can hear it creaking. Yep. Our audio director, Andy, is a genius. We, uh, we grabbed him from Grinding Gear Games. He's incredible. So what are these? I know. Now? Are these uh? Beams. These are yeah, wood beams, wood floor. Okay. So that color tells you the stability. Ah right. Okay. So can I push this out far enough that it's weak? Let's have a look. Yep. Oh yeah, that one's red. Red if means. I stand on this. Is it going to start wobbling? <laughs> a little bit further. It'll need to be a little bit further. Wood's quite stable, so it's yellow, so. Oh, it's oh. going. This hey, one's look, cracking, look. look. Yeah. If we step off it, does it stop? Oh. No, fuck this it one's out. going, this one's going. Yeah. You can uh, hear it get, creaking. Uh, get your hammer on and see what the HP is. Oh no, it's a thousand. Maybe it's just warning the textures? Yeah, that's just warning. Yeah. And and also the structures you build on it, the inventory in them adds weight to it. So I had the problem when I was testing the other day. Uh, I'd built a thatch building and I'd put a, um, a stone furnace down and when I put stuff in it, it was too much, and it uh, broke actually the wall beside, uh, the wall on the floor beside. Oh, that's cool. There's gonna be some hilarious shit where people make like an insane base, I and they forget that shit, right? and they just collapse their building. And I, I mean, I think that's an example of, there's a whole bunch of crazy stuff we could do, but we've really focused on... Yeah, you have to, I'm just looking at your stream. It's a little bit weird in terms of how build, uh, beams come in. But, um, yeah, we've, we've tried to focus on all the architecture so that we can, when we flow in the new content, it all just works. So the game might seem a little bit boring at the moment because we just want to really make sure the foundational stuff works. I don't want to work on a project again where that's not the case. I get that. Yeah, so you see, say, okay, you have to you have to sort of build up at the moment with the beams. Yeah. Beams were a very late addition, but they I love love them. Do the trusters like this actually like support? Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, and what? you can actually place two of them. You can place another one over top of it as well. Okay, that looks dope as fuck. You can play cool. like place like go points here. That looks really cool. They can cross each other. So then in the end game, you'd have to build, like, there might be some something you need to mine over the side of a chasm, and you have to build a bridge to an get actual to bridge, and then build yes. a little buggy and drive over there to, like... Exactly. And that's the throughput that so idea. Cool. And our, our vehicles are built with, like, modules. So your chassis is not that important, but all the stuff inside it really is. So you can imagine, when with this kind of game, you need upgrades, right? So you can upgrade your engine, you can upgrade the wheels, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but to get all this working, the basic mechanics, chopping trees, mining voxels, it all has to really work. Yeah. Is there a player number that you're aiming for, or is is there a, like per? We support uh, eight players. We we did investigate listen servers, so um, you know, technically we could just have like a headless client. Um, we haven't looked at it again. Uh, but that that would potentially allow us to go a bit higher. So you know, at the moment, you notice little hitches when a player joins and stuff like that. If we ever have problems supporting um, players, we can always provide look at that kind of option and stuff. Oh, okay. I guess it really depends on the, the like scenario we're putting you in, and that's why we've started with I guess the easy stuff. You know, PVE and that. I just feel like so many of the games I play, it's like really hard to play the game if it doesn't know whether it's PvE or PvP. Like, just pick a lane, 
and do the experience for that. And that's how we're approaching the individual prospects, the individual scenarios. Okay. Also, uh, PS5 or just PC at the minute? Uh, we got really mucked around by the console manufacturers. To be fair, Sony were pretty good. They were just like, yeah, no, we're not going to help you. Um, you know, you can put it on the, um, if you want. But it's like, we were going into this and, uh, you know, we were starting to look at that stuff and it was like lockdown. We're like, we're going to need someone to help us. We don't well, have a publisher. Way. You know, we, we tried to work with a few publishers, but they were just, you know, useless. Um, oh, <laughs> so yeah, we... we and, and Microsoft really mucked us around, which was super annoying. Um, but yeah, so we've just sort of focused on this. So I'd like to bring the console, and we've designed it so it can be. I, I get the feeling you'd need 11 PS5s in tandem to run this game on Epic. Um, so I actually played with a few journalists. I played with a journalist who was running it on a um, 1060, and he was okay. Um, but maybe he was just used to it looking terrible. So I think I'm quite lucky. Uh, my computer runs it real well. Um, and I only just recently upgraded from a 2080 Ti to a 3090. Um, so I run it on a, one of those super widescreen monitors at uh, 5 by 2 k Right. And I run it on a 5K Epic on a Holy 3090. Moly. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, I think... Also, J Rod helped put together my PC. I think it costs like twenty grand. That's actually. a big monitor. That I actually have anything. two two GPUs in it because when I got my thirty ninety, I couldn't disconnect my twenty eighty Ti because it's got a water cooler and all the water coolers in it. So yeah. I'm looking on my floor at the moment, and um, every now and then I forget, and I'm like, oh, my feet are really toasty and warm, and it's because my feet are, ha are sitting on the twenty eighty Ti and they're warming up. <laughs> <laughs> so I should probably disconnect that before I get electrocuted. Is there any questions, chat, that you you'd like to ask, me to ask, Dean? Nvidia have been so cool to work with, though. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised because in their interest to make a game look great and run well on their hardware. Mitosis, yeah. So my my chat want to know how many types of biomes you plan on implementing. Um, we just want to keep implementing them. That's the thing, like, this for us was just the start. So we've done, th in this map, Olympus, there's three. Um, well, there's three basic categories. There's forest, desert, and arctic. But there's actually sort of two rough variations of them each. So basically, when we sat down with the uh, um, map designers, we were like, uh, you know, we sort of came up with what we wanted to do. And we really, we really wanted to start learning about impassable terrain and, and how that factors into the players going around and stuff. So, yeah, this this map, which is called Olympus, uh, has that. The next map's called Styx, which is pretty much similar. Um, I don't want to give away too much more than that. But, yeah, then, then things start getting pretty interesting. Huh. But for the Earth-like ones, uh, three broad types at the moment. Is it procedurally generated? No, so hand generated, but we do have procedural elements. So caves, um, resources, where the meta resources are, stuff like that. Okay. Will low end PCs we run this? Feel more authored. I mean, really, I was I was starting from, I want it to have the atmosphere of Skyrim. That was where we started with. It was like, let's try and make a survival game feel like the atmosphere of Skyrim. Uh, never played Skyrim, so. <laughs> I'm on that one. Wow. I'm You're so, like uh, just admitting that. I know. You just said that out loud. I admitted a few things recently. I've never watched Robocop, Terminator. I've, I, there's loads of things that I've that are normal, Who but I've never done. Who are you, man? Who uh, are you? Yeah, I never played Skyrim. I had you at my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I ate all your poutine. I regret nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ate all of the cake. Like, seriously, I did. We should just... We shouldn't even laugh about it. <laughs> There's a lot. I need to do this thatch beams, don't I? Right in my life. Zero. Oh, why is this? Wait, why is this? To see it went blue because now it's like connected. What is that? Is that a thatch beam? I think legitimately my favorite thing in this game is the. Um... Oh god. Destroying, oh, this is destroying not, this objects, isn't even just the right seeing all time, those stones and rocks and like wooden beams just fall down. It's so crazy. We're seeing a lot about your personality beam. from that. <laughs> oh, I live with Shannon. I saw your face. 
when the building was on fire and you walked into it, you were just shocked. But also a little excited. <laughs> I was excited by the graphics fidelity, but I was terrified about not knowing what to do to fix it. It's a neat one there. Yeah, yeah. It's weird that you are like I say, you're having... Uh, problems. The biggest thing we need to do is tell people they have to update their um, graphics oh. drivers. Like, if they've got an NVIDIA card and they can't see the DLSS option, they should, like, abandon all hope. You know, go go download the graphics drivers. There's a lot of issues from it. Um, and we, we had to, at the last minute, disable changing the settings um, in-game because there was just a crazy crash and really got to try and stop um, getting too many crashes. Um, my chat asking, is there a, I think you kind of answered this, is there a story behind the game or just survive? Uh, yeah, there is. There's actually, if people Google, it's called Icarus uh, No Rescue, the trailer. Um, it's like a mini movie. It's like a pilot yeah. on Netflix. It's so good. Um, and we actually had, a, we've got a whole bunch more of that planned, but our country went into lockdown and all the filming got cancelled. Um, and uh, so there is. That was one big regret I had from Daisy. There. there was so many. Um, it was the perfect opportunity to do stuff with, and I, I feel like we just totally squandered it. So didn't want to make those mistakes with Icarus. Um, and, you know, part of us wanted to finalize everything completely before we went out, but I'm really glad we did the beta weekend because we're learning... Ronaldo to shitty win. Yeah, we want to have a heap of Ricky C. It'll be a mixture of stuff in-game, but stuff out of game as well. Okay. I'm gonna get rid of my copper ore, I think. Leather. So what, team? What happens when those storm explosions you get to 100 percent You just take damage. Depends on the storm, um, and that will depend on the biome too, because you face different kinds of storms in different biomes. So, like desert, it causes a lot of ablative damage and stuff like that. Um, uh, obviously, um, Arctic, it's, uh, it's cold, um, yeah. You know, forest, a lot more about, uh, lightning and, you know, the chaos that that causes with trees and stuff. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't pull well off the bottom of that. There's gonna be, Forward there are gonna be... I think there are going to be aliens and creatures and stuff, yeah, Barracuda. You can eventually get sniper rifles and, and better weaponry. Uh, I saw so. someone in Breaks chat asked about AMD GPUs. We are going to, um, uh, we are going to work Rory, on gotcha. the AMD equivalent of that. Um, if anyone from AMD is watching, please contact us. <laughs> um, you know, um, so yeah, we, we can only work on stuff that we know. Um, we, we actually believe that their latest driver, they just suddenly released a driver recently and um, it appears to cause a problem, so people, some people have to roll back. Yeah, if you're a GPU manufacturer, you do need to work with uh, game companies to try and make sure that the game's good. But yeah, we, will, we, we are looking into that. He signed, he did sign for United, yeah. I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to watching Ronaldo play in the Premier League. I am very much looking forward to that. He is an absolute... Just... He's a beast, isn't he? The physics are so cool. Do you see that when one you just got that stand up super there? Super long distance... Uh, snipe shot of the deer. Yeah. Um, I'd say like 20 of our development team were watching your stream at that point. And everyone, including myself actually, and I... I should have known better was like, there's no way he's going to get that shot. <laughs> everyone was just like, what the <laughs> heck? Yeah, that was, that was, it felt great, especially with the little skill shot cam. Because the shot was so long, you just see the arrow for like forever while it flies across. Yeah, that felt really good. Um, we're specifically designing big, long canyons. So you can have ch the challenge of building big bridges for like your vehicles and stuff. Where do you um where do you decide to like blur the lines between reality and fiction in this game? Like for the ammo types, are you gonna make your own ammo? Are they gonna be different bullets, or is it is it have we, have we come from Earth, by the way? Yeah, so you know, I'm a big fan of the hard science fiction. So I really like the Peter F. Hamilton Night's Dawn trilogy or the Expanse and stuff. 
Uh, but I do think you have to start making a fun game for a start. So we started from there, and, and oh. it was very much we're like, okay, what setting can we do the most in? We, we needed to be able to do prehistoric stuff, but we also wanted to have high-tech stuff as well. So this setting allowed us to do that. You know, you're a poor prospector going down on the planet. You want to save a lot of room in your, um, uh, in your drop ship, so you have stuff you can take back with you um, and that. But... You know, we've we've got a lot of plans for cool weapons for the planet, uh, the meta tech tree, because if you think about it, that allows us to do cool things. We could make a crazy energy rifle that you can't build the ammo for while you're on the planet, but it maybe fires like five shots. And you know, we were, you were talking, break about balance problems. It's the same. Uh, you know, that we get to solve that a bit because we can give you a crazy weapon, but it only maybe fires five shots while you're on the planet. Uh, uh. That's cool, actually, yeah. Especially if you make people decide. Like, what if you could get a railgun and it's the only thing that can kill a certain, like, enemy that can attack you mm -hmm. on the planet's surface? Mm -hmm. But if you find a way to circumvent or avoid that enemy using stealth, you can save that railgun and you can use it for an alternative function, like shooting a certain type of mineral that's imp impenetrable to mine unless you crack it open with a railgun shot. So you might get attacked and you're like, oh, I really want to use a railgun, but if I if I you know, brute force this fight with a spear, then I can actually save my railgun shots to mine the adamantium. And it kind of makes people make those choices. That are, when they're, when they're a, a few hours into a mission, it'll feel like a real decision. Like, what do I do here? Yeah, but I think, you know, you guys will appreciate this more than anybody. We have to make sure we get the gunplay good. Um, and, you know, to do that, we, we really sat down and said, let's get the... Um, Let's get the bow mechanics good and do good bows, and then let's do good, uh, um, you know, weapon stuff. So we've got the weapons in, but you know, we want to make sure that everything you know feels as solid yeah. as it can oh. as we go. I'll be honest. In a lot of these games, whether it's Ark or whatever, the gunplay always feels like an afterthought. Like they literally just copy pasted some default code from the default mm -hmm. Unreal library for guns and just went, "There you go. There's guns." Yeah. So if you're actually taking some effort to really make them feel quite nice, then that's that's that'll set you out. I think it'll separate you from the rest of these kind of games. Definitely, it's about iteration, you know, and and that's where I think the the problem with early access is that people quite rightly get burned out on it, or the game goes in a different direction, and that was why we were like, okay, we need to get feedback on a lot of this stuff. But we don't want to screw people over. And that was where we were like, okay, well, let's do beta weekends and let people refund the game at, no matter how much they try of it. Um, and that way, because, you know, legitimately, some people will be like, mm, I thought the game was going to go in X direction. Or I was kind of interested in the game and I want to see where it's going. But if it goes in a bad direction, I'm just not interested anymore. And I think yeah. as game developers, we're okay with that. Fair play for doing that. I think it just makes sense, you know? Yeah. Nobody wants to make a bad game. Nobody wants someone to play a game and not like it. Because they won't buy your next game, you know? Yeah. Props. It's a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good way of putting it. There's a dead deer on the floor. <laughs> Just to confirm, Zach, you're using Break as basically your work slave here. <laughs> well, I'm the one cutting trees down and he's out there building. Oh, okay. Fear, we're fear, we're fear, sharing fear, the fear, responsibilities. <laughs> well, um, so how, will it be possible to do the thing solo? Will it, will it be possible to do the same thing solo as it would be in a team? Like, for making choices, could you in a team then... Because uh, I'm, I'm guessing you can queue solo into servers, right? Yeah, um, I, I swear everybody, break is not a plant asking good questions. That's another really good question. You've literally asked good questions about all our gameplay pillars. <laughs> so our first gameplay pillar was actually it's fun to play alone. Um, yeah. And if anyone's making games out there and you want to make a multiplayer game, unless you're basically 
like Blizzard, maybe not anymore, but but you know Bethesda. <laughs> um, uh, you need to consider this pillar, um, uh, or be very lucky. But um, yeah, we said it's it's got to be fun to play alone. That doesn't mean to say it's got to be as easy to play alone, but it does need to be yeah. fun to play alone. So that's why like we've got the solo talent tree, um, which we will expand. You'll see there's only one. Um, branch in there at the moment, but we have several different ones. Uh, you know, to just really capture into that, because I think, for me, it sort of came from this. I'd play Ark, and I only ever play Ark Hardcore. None of this casual, you know, when you die, you should die. And I'd say to my friends, I'd be like, let's play Ark. And they'd be like, no, we don't want to. And I'm like, well, I'm going to play Ark. So I'd start playing it. And because I was playing it, my friends would join. That's what we wanted to do with Icarus. I've been on the wrong side of what Dean's talking about, by the way. Dean once said to me, like, hey, you want to play Minecraft? And I was like, oh, yeah, let's chill and play Minecraft. So I loaded his server, and it's like, oh, download these mods. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And I loaded it, and I load in, and I'm freezing to death and starving. It's like, oh, yeah, if you stay out in the cold, you'll die, and you need to eat warm, like, meat, so you'll you'll freeze to death, and you, yeah, you get dysentery and die in this mod. Like, and the, the whole game I held, I, like, built a little shelter and a fireplace and sat huddled up, trying not to die until Dean found me to, like, save me. So when he Enviro says he, he Mine. this game's hardcore, he's not fucking Enviro joking. Enviro Mine, that's the name of the mod. It hasn't been updated in ages, though, for uh, Minecraft. Rabbi said that there's going to be that's incredible. vehicles, there's going to be... It had, like, Did he temperature say and sanity and stuff like that. You could that. lose your mind so and stuff good. if you were lonely or something. Yeah, if you were underground too long. Incredible. Yeah. It was so mad. But yeah, when Dean says he likes this game's hardcore, he's not messing around. Yeah, one of the first stories you told me about Dean was when you were playing... Um, What's that space station game where you... I know what's coming. I know the story. It's like, the story's well, legendary. He was like murdering someone, or you you were just... He, he looked over his PC as he was murdering someone. I can't remember. Oh, that was right. Yeah, I was... That that wasn't the first time we played, but I went to Dean's house in Prague. And at the time, Kibo was there. And we were like, let's all play a game of Space Station 13. But the point of Space Station 13 is you can't let the other people you're playing with know who you are or it kind of undermines the concept of the game because you're meant to be in this kind of real world. So I randomly got picked out of all the people on the ship to be the antagonist, which means you get to kill people. And I accidentally started killing Kiwa. Oh, Jesus. So like I start choking her in the game and I'm just thinking, oh, I'm just going to choke this person over here. And then I hear her literally go, oh, and I look up at her and she looks at me and we lock eyes and I'm like choking her character in game. And we're looking at each other and Dean is blissfully unaware on the other side of the room playing his character. <laughs> and I literally choke her to death and kill her. <laughs> then the mad thing is in that game, Dean was the chief medical officer. And in that game, you can get someone's DNA and revive them. But the game rules are if, so, if you're revived from DNA, you can't remember what killed you. So Dean was typing to her in game like, hey, what killed you? And she had to sit there and go, I don't know. I can't remember <laughs> knowing full well that I choked her to death. <laughs> <laughs> like in a hallway somewhere. That was so weird. <laughs> what a great game. I still play it quite a bit. Yeah? Yeah. Have you played yeah. Unity Station? Like, they're making a new one, right? Yeah, yeah. I supported their Patreon for a while. They're a really cool cool group. There's, there's several remake ones, um, and they're all actually pretty good. There's one called Re-SSD, um, which uh, oh, has he put is these on like... The side there? This, there was this project called uh ssd or something which was another remake of it that died um and and so then other people it, it's very complicated but yeah there's several cool pop projects there's about 10 remakes of it from what i can gather <laughs> i've seen a lot of people trying to remake it it's another one i've never played <clears throat> is it a bit Such like a a, among us then in that way where you can dude it's like Among Us yeah. times a thousand. Imagine Among Us, except it's an entire space station, like a, maybe a hundred times bigger. And every function in the space station is a real thing. So like in Among Us, where you connect the wires together to turn the power back on. In this game, you have to literally use a device to check each wire to see if it's got power. And you have to put on insulating gloves. Or if you touch the wire, you get electrocuted. It's like all simulated. Oh, it's okay, like Among Us okay. on steroids times a thousand. It's so uh, crazy. T Rav, I play he's as just said he, Zachary he's not Fox. too sure, yeah, but it was very Fox. difficult. Hey, um, like they would have been difficult to That's speak one of my to. My favorite thing. To Microsoft play. and I, I do uh, like PlayStation. You used to be the chief medical officer in Zachary Fox on a server, and I was like one of the interns, like the medics, and I was called Ben Dover. I have a YouTube series called like The Adventures of Ben Dover, and with I 
couldn't tell you this because you're the chief medical officer, but I got bored, so I went, broke into the chemistry lab and I made some hydrochloric acid. And then you'd built, you had the research and development team build these little robots that went around the med bay and they injected people if their health was less than 99. And I opened them up with a screwdriver and I replaced the healing mo uh, stuff inside with hydrochloric acid. So someone would walk into the med bay with light burns and the medical bot would be like, beep boop, I need to inject you to whatever. And it would inject them and then it'd fall over and start going into shock. <laughs> and then you'd be like, what the fuck's going on? And I found it hilarious and I never told you until this day. <laughs> um, Zach, you should put a, a beam at the end, you know, where the ramp comes up. You should put a beam there to like blend in the two ends. Oh yeah, we'll do. I'm just uh, fucking dying of starvation. But yeah, sorry about that, Zachary Fox. Oh, I also play sometimes my alternate character is uh, um, uh, Shaniqua Willowbottom, who is a sassy, no-nonsense um, cargo uh, technician who runs the um, logistics bay. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't take any crap. She doesn't sound like she would. Oh, Jesus. If you don't have the correct paperwork, you ain't getting your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just reply stamp in all capitals if people don't have a head of department stamp. So it's a level yeah. faster. Mine things just basically just basically it's such a cool game. You need to do some kind of oh please Dean. Do some kind of Easter egg or somewhere Play on the, map. the game. Please, for the love of God, I'll do anything if you do this. Please have a cargo container welded shot model with a thirteen on it impacted in the side of a mountain as if someone <laughs> got spaced and they kind of nano trans yeah something. yeah like a nano trans like locker welded shot within the side of a mountain that would be the ultimate easter egg uh hey supernova thanks to the 11. there's this thing you can do in the game break where if so if you want to kill someone you can like knock them unconscious and you can carry them and stuff them in a locker and then get a welding torch out and then weld the locker shut. So on their screen, they're just stuck inside the locker and they can just see through a slit and they can't do anything. And then you pick, you can pick up the locker, go to an airlock and throw it out the airlock. So it just goes into space. So they just float away from the space station and they can just see nothing while they slowly asphyxiate. It's called spacing. As someone in your chat raised a really good quick question, um, Zach, which was around, well, sort of more of a statement. But around basically, uh, you know, they, they were saying how they they found it really easy because basically, you know, it's pretty easy to get oxygen. This is Skyrim Icarus, shot. Um, and, you know, food and stuff like that. It was a good point, but we, we've sort of done that fairly deliberately. We, we need people to be able to experience the game and the mechanics and stuff like that. Uh, and the whole idea of a session-based play is you can kind of choose how you want to experience it. I think about, and you're probably going to laugh with this, but remember when we used to play Payday and we play the like it's jewelry the store mission? Map. Yeah, you'd run in and do it over and over and over and just learn. Yeah, but we we'd often play it on overkill, which was ridiculous because we'd lose all the time, and it would have been even though you get extra um, experience with it. If you did the math, it would be better to just do the basic one. But you want to yeah. do the crazy one. Um, and yes, I would go through and kill all the hostages. Do you remember that? Yep. I remember. <laughs> it was a long day. <laughs> let, Stress let relief. <laughs> yeah. Let's virtually shoot people in the head that are in a jewelry store. Uh, Space what Station 13, Glenny. Like, no. Space Station 13. I don't want like, any loose ends or something. You come in and you're oh like, God, what are you yeah, doing? That was a clip on my channel. Yeah, we, we you're like, we what are you the, doing? We subdued all the security guards. They had their weapons down. They were like hands behind their, head, their heads kind of thing. And then we get all the bags of the money out, and just as we leave, Dean's like, no loose ends, and just head taps all the fucking civilians and walks out. It was terrifying. <laughs> Got we lost our bonus or something. Yeah, exactly. It was like a $1,000 a person or something. Yeah. Absolute psycho. Oh, poison arrows. How do I get poison paste? It'd be off a tree, right? Or frog? Or froge? I also remember when you were Zachary. This is a really like, chill game, hey, Smoking Jay. Come here, we're going to teach you surgery. At the minute, anyway. And then there was a dude that needed surgery. He had appendicitis. Remember, you can get that. It's PlayStation 13. And then, while he was unconscious from the anesthetic, you had the chef turn up into the surgery room. And I was like, why is the chef here? And then you handed the chef the guy's spleen. And the chef went and made a spleen burger. 
And then when the guy woke up from surgery, you're like, oh, well, yeah, the surgery went really well. Here's some food to get you back on your feet. And you sat there and fed the guy a burger with his own spleen in it. I am. Um, <laughs> I once... Why are uh, you was like a this? <laughs> I shouldn't admit to this because you're not supposed to just grief. Um, actually, no, I think I was a trader then. That's right. I was a trader. And uh, I met this guy in the maintenance tunnels and while I was stealing something. And he was like, what are you doing? And he whacks me with a, oh, um, reload. Huh? a crowbar or something. Mm. And um, and so I start bashing him to death with a fire extinguisher, as you do. As you do, classic and, thing. Um, and I, I got a better hit on him than he got into me. So he goes down, and I'm just sort, sort of bashing his face in. And then someone walks in and is like, what are you doing? And I'm like, he's a changeling. The guy's a changeling, which is a very yeah, bad yeah. accusation, right? Changelings are very bad. Anyway, um, that, that had reports on the station of there being a changeling. Um, and I was actually the cha one of the changelings, but um, they didn't know that. And so um, there was a trial, because there's like lawyers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there's like a judge and everything, right? And, and they found him guilty and they sentenced him to death. So they like exploded him or something, but his brain come out. And I took his brain to the chef and the, br and the chef turned him into like a burger. And then I sat there eating him in a burger. <laughs> this is so messed up. <laughs> Zach? <laughs> Zach just gone. What's happened to him? Press F to loot. Oh, Zach DC'd. Somehow DC'd. Oh, I think he did. I think he did. Yoinking his loot? No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. When we realized we were like, oh my god. For, for a while, up until pretty recently, you could join anyone's prospect. And we were like... The only reason it's not a PvP game is because we're saying it's a PvE game. We have yeah. friendly fire, we have, um, uh, you can loot people's corpses. So yeah, we, we hurriedly sort of put something in. <laughs> we did have it that you can carry people around for a while, but there were some bugs with it, so we've disabled it. Alright, yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, what, what should I get? Well, in infantry with rocks, so he's encumbered. Iron core. It's me. He's got <laughs> loads of stuff. He does. Sticks. I can add them to mine. Oh, I have loads of sticks. What am I doing? Yeast. Why is he carrying spoiled meat? Take the firewalker. Uh, any more questions you'd like me to ask Dean whilst he's so kindly chilling with us? I've got five spoil meat. What am I doing? <laughs> Why is the loot window bigger than a normal inventory? Oh, I thought Sack just had an upgraded inventory. How far along does he think all the content will be in the game by? Oh. Uh, how long are you, like, planning to de develop the game and support it? So, like, are you, you going to do content for, like, the next year or two after, after like, 1.0 release, or...? Oh, we set the whole studio up around it. So we actually opened an entirely new studio. Um, uh, our uh, lead programmer, Ben Carnell, literally wrote a book on Unreal Engine game development. He came over from, like, an AI face recognition company um, to work and and a whole bunch of the grinding gear games team who work on, worked on Path of Exile came over and we all like formed, formed the studio so you know the studio is built around making and continuing to develop this game okay so you know we've tried tried to design it as I guess a content factory so we can just pump biomes into it animals into it uh, you know as, items into it and then new planets and stuff like that 
Uh, did trees and other stuff respawn and after you've, like, kind of felled an area? Does it respawn or is it just gone? Uh, they don't at the moment. Um, they don't at the moment because I didn't want them to because I wanted you to spread out. We, we do actually, we can actually support it with the system we have. Uh, and actually one of the suggestions that came out of watching people's streams and, and us playing it as well was that maybe we should have some kind of like paste or something that you can use to regenerate grass because you might want to for aesthetics or like bushes and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, someone in your chat said they like that they don't respawn. I do too from a balance perspective because it sort yeah. of makes you go out and if there's a forest fire, it's really like, you know, tragic. Oh, there can be fully fledged like forest fires? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big big fires. Okay. Well yeah, when we set up I just had an internet connection dropped, so I was gone. Um when our base set on fire yesterday, we finally put it out and we just looked out the window and the forest outside was on fire. You have to cut wow. the trees down. That clip of yours, Zach, is so comical. Yeah. Because there's one moment I, I can't I couldn't actually is read the name of who it was. But someone runs out on fire, screaming, and then runs off in the other direction, setting, like, grass and stuff on fire as they go. Yeah. Why is there an oxygen system if the planet has water? We, we need to do that. What do you mean? Here. If we'll be able to have endless mode, that way you don't have to leave anything behind and start over on your next journey. Okay. Placeholder. Or like a... Uh, someone's asked if there's going to be like a... Um, like an endless mode, where you don't have to go back, where you can just... Kind of just stay in the same biome for a while. I swear, break is not a plant. Asking the, the good questions. Um, so yeah, uh, that was a one thing we learned when we announced the game. People oh, that was vice were like, versus "Well, we want a like endless place," and we sat down afterwards, and it was when we'd like you know, we ditched free to play and stuff like that. And I said to the team, I was like, "We need to do this." Um, and it was a huge uh, pain. But we, we've done it. We, we call them outposts. So they're okay. specially designed worlds. They're a little bit smaller. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can build uh, whatever you want in them uh, for, forever. They're, they're safer, though. Um, they're, and that's where they're, they're a session that's specifically designed for endless mode. So they, they don't have, say, hurricanes and stuff like that. Because right. those would obviously trash your buildings. And... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Uncle Zim, I think it's the weekend, yeah? Did you invite me again, break? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Still having the same problem? I don't know. When I, I... I can see his thing on my list now, but when I hover over it, it says conclude prospect. I don't want to click it. Uh, if you go back to... Oh, that's settled waiting for others. Um, if you go back to the character thing... So it's going to be open... Go back to the character... Every two weeks, I believe? On weekends? So I think at the join prospect was better. Oh, okay, yeah, got it. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Play. Click play. No. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, sorry. No, you're right. That's super. Any cool. mounts? Uh, someone's asked if there's any mounts. So I'm guessing any, like, animals that you can ride? Uh, Maybe tame or. No. It has been discussed on the list. We, uh, we really want to get the creatures as they are now right before we add something in um you know we really want to work on their behaviors we've tried to a bit so i mean i how much do you guys what do you want me to tell you behind the curtain about how some things work Fair enough. yeah yeah go for it so just spoiler alert for anyone just for 20 seconds if you don't want to know some of the behind the scenes stuff uh you know mute me or something but um the wolves will actually stop you'll see them stop and they'll like howl and stuff they'll ask other wolves to come join them and and stuff like that so we want to develop all that kind of stuff before we start just throwing in here's a janky horse that you can ride on and stuff like that yeah get that oh is voip is voip plan planned yeah so you know that was something that um was brought up that we really wanted to do um but at this point in development we wanted to make sure we got feedback on the core mechanics so we haven't got that in, but it is planned, yeah. Positional um, audio. Yeah. You know what would be cool is if you had um, in-game audio where, like, let's say you've got people on different sides of a mountain or different sides mm -hmm. of a valley, 
and they've got a radio, so they can go to the radio and you know, check in yeah, how much just like a got. Acre and Armor, did you ever try out that yeah. mod, the radio mod? Man, it's such a good mod. You could make, you could maybe have a, an electrical storm, like an EMP storm, that cuts mm -hmm. out the, the, ra the radio. So Ooh, the radio shit. is just like... And it's like, oh shit, we have no idea what's going on. So you might be like, hey, radio me if that if that bear comes back if you need help. And then the electrical storm rolls in and now you can't radio your teammate and they might fire a flare arrow into the sky like to be like, fuck it, come and help. Like stuff like that would be really cool. Did you ever try out the acre mod, right? Um, was there a mod that it's, used it? It was, yeah, it, was oh, same, it, was, it was part of ACE, wasn't it? Didn't it get merged into the ACE yeah. mod? So like if you died, you couldn't say you died kind of thing to it's your like teammate? Yeah. Break. It had an actual radio, like actually almost OPSEC breaking um, how the actual army radios are set up and like ciphers and stuff like that. It was pretty yeah. crazy. What's that mod that yeah. we played where... Okay. That's the one break. Oh, is that It'd the one, ice. yeah? Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. Where well, you couldn't join TeamSpeak or Discord, so when you died, you just, mm -hmm. you were like, sack, sack. No, you had like, you're like, you're okay, like, switch <gasps> to the other channel. You'd have like a backup channel ready. Yeah. And so you could steal you're... people's radios and stuff. And yeah, and they'd be like, Dave, where are you? Dave, I'm coming up from the west. And you're like, guys, look to the west. And you'd see people coming. That was one of the best gaming experiences so cool. ever. Yeah. That was really, and it's so difficult to repeat because of the use of TeamSpeak and Discord. You what? have to like, trust the community, right? Exactly. Why don't you explain to Dean what fucking ace fury tried to do to you with the radio oh yeah so like do you know when you <laughs> when you press push to talk it goes yep like, every time you press it he was near a person and i was like three or four hundred meters away and his radio kept going on and off and on and off and on and off and i was just like aces aces you okay and his radio just kept going on and off and then i heard the huge firefight and then aces erupted and said I was trying to communicate through Morse code. Did you not understand it? I was just he was like, doing no. SOS in Morse code with with radio clicks. I was just like, I, I, I lost, I lost my mind. That's the funniest. Well, did you learn most more any Morse code after that? Do you know what SOS is? No. <laughs> what? Zach, you know yeah. SOS? Hey, yeah. da, 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 da. Oh, okay, he does. I do not know that. He was gen genuinely. Furious thought, the fact that I didn't you know get that. that. He's like, break on no Musk. <laughs> yeah. It is the most aces thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. I could just imagine him doing that. Da 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 dash dash da da da. That was mental. I'm an idiot. How does he not know yeah, I'm an idiot? I think needs a bit of work. You might want to aim off a bit. Are you cold, Sack? Uh, getting there, yeah. So you can make like, by the fire, you can right? make ghillie suits and, and uh, like fur coats and stuff when you level up. So for anyone watching who's like, why the heck is that beam stuff being? That's my fault because I insisted the team add the beams and the beams were not part of the original design. Um, so we're still iterating on that a bit. Uh, Any way to pin the waypoints on the map to other players? Uh, no, I actually want to get rid of all the waypoints. I, uh, I don't want to tell you at all. I want you to do map to ground, like, you know, I want you to read the map and, and, uh, judge the terrain and figure out where you are. I'm cool with that. It's a survival game. Yeah, it's a survival yeah. game. You should be, you know. We were actually going to remove more of them for, uh, um, beta, but, um, it was too risky. Wow. Tried to some other stuff. It'd be What's cool if you could make beacons. Bulb? So you could put beacons down at certain waypoints. And they don't show up on the minimap, but when you see them in the distance, like flashing like red and green or whatever, you can be like, oh yeah, go left at beacon two. That's where the mine is. And so you're still having to navigate, but you're making like like uh, synthetic waypoints, basically. Opening up confluence and putting that in. Beacons. They could be powered. Yeah. Maybe you could have like a remote control for them where like, let's say you're lost. You're like, fuck, I'm lost. You get like a little PDA out and you can like activate a beacon mm. and it fires a flare up. So you go, like, oh shit, there's a beacon. But then it, maybe you have to like reload the flares and like me, just use the flare arrows from the, that you can craft and you put them in the beacon as storage and then you can make it remotely fire them or something. Yeah, we, we actually did. I'm probably getting in trouble for saying this as well. We did a bit of work on sort of automation stuff as well for sort of late game planetary tech. I must admit though we haven't we haven't touched that in a bit um but yeah that's uh, what we're looking at 
Kind of oh. sort of extend it at the end for you to do cool stuff. This does feel like a missed opportunity for me with Space Engineers and Arc a bit to sort of start to automate some of the stuff that you want to oh, do later good. on. Uh, um, yeah, and that's the whole fun of Satisfactory, right? Seems like an easy win, too, once you've done all that stuff. But. I don't have to get our, the right angle on it. Is it being wiped? Uh, Baz, it's session based, so it's like uh, it's like Tarkov. For I don't example, think spaced out, right? That's directed at you, Bray. I know. I think we're both doing it, so we're just offset from each other. I know, it's taking the mic. No, this second one's too long, right? Yeah, it's like a gap of three, then a gap of three, then a gap of four, I think. You know, I had that the other day with a building I was doing in Acarus, but it was even worse because I had a floor and um, if I changed it, I was going to have to rip up the floor. It's quite bad. Yeah. Oh, One, yeah. Two, I was, I was three. That should be upset, there, right? I thought I'd have to remove all the stuff in my base to upgrade the floor. And then Timber came in and said, there's actually just a tool that upgrades the floor and keeps mm. everything on it. And it worked perfectly. I was so happy. He's been doing good work. The, the, the uh, beams being weird to place is absolutely 100% my fault. I think what what it needs is when when you've got the latch point or where you want it to be, if you just tap R, if it could just rotate on each axis, that would just fix it. Absolutely, it's, yeah. Like I say, it was never part of the original design. I just got them to crowbar it in. So like I say, I pressed that, be, Specky, yeah. yeah. Fault, so you, you, Dean's saying it now, and he, fix it, though. It, it needs tweaking. So if you press R, it chooses horizontal, diagonal, vertical. But then you, I, I don't know how you choose what way you want it to go diagonally. Uh, someone you know in your I mean? chat, sec asked about um, planting crops and if it's in. Um, it's disabled for this beta weekend. Ah. So there's no point in carrying lilies. East, corn. Stuff like that is there at the minute. Hold R for that wheel, tap R to rotate. Oh, it could be. No. I think Dean was saying then it's his fault that they're a bit janky. He made them put them in. So Fraud I think they just lead. need some work, right? How did Sack craft the... Is there any food at the campfire break? Uh, there should be some in the fire. Let me have a look. Yeah, there's a couple of steaks. Alright, cool. I'll leave them on it. Or do you want me to bring them? If you bring them, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'll go. I'm gonna get this last thing down here, but I can't seem to get the beam right. There, there. Uh... Oh, thanks. There's a wall. Yeah, a bit of fillet, is it? It is, yeah. For only the finest cuts. Nice. Kong Fan and Secretia were moaning the other day about they went to a like a fancy steakhouse at a convention and they ordered Wagyu. And the, the, the waiter bought out filet, which is like the most lean cut with no meat, with no fat at all. And he was mm -hmm. like, no, no, this is Wagyu, this is Wagyu. And they're like, dude, it's, it's how could it be Wagyu if it has no fat? Like, that's the whole point. Yeah, <laughs> it's like marble, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. And that's the difference between a 30 pound steak and like a, a 9,800, 200 pound steak. Yeah. Oh god. You have to come at that from the bottom. Yeah. Can I explain the mission timer? 
Uh, it's that's how long the the server's up for. That's how long the 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 session is up for, right? The raid on the planet. Baz so like, gifted a tier one sub to Thysis Preston. They have given two different Baz. subs in the channel. Somewhat similar to. So like a Tarkod raid time is, is 45 minutes, to do, like, this one's 21 of, like, hours. Materials or gases or anything from one place to another. Um, Unreal lets us do a whole bunch of cool things with splines. Thank you, We Baz. did actually Welcome play around Preston. with that early on, with that automation type stuff. I feel like Satisfactory just really showed what you can do with Unreal um, in that kind of area. Obviously it's hard to do everything that, say, Satisfactory would do in one big, you know, sort of fell swoop, but yeah. There's definitely some, some cool oh my ideas word. there. But I just keep coming back to that. We've got to get the basics right, you know? The almost boring stuff. And that's why, like, I hope this is a little boring. Because that says that we've been doing the right stuff. The foundational stuff that makes up the core of a survival game. If we can get that right, we can layer on the crazy stuff later on. How is... All building right, a Hope group all game well in Unreal compared to building a game in Armour 2. Confusion. A survival game, yeah. Is it a much better um, experience for you personally? Like, just a personal yeah, question? Absolutely. Definitely, 100%. For Actually sure. having tools, um, I bet you can iterate so quickly in Unreal. And we have uh, insanely good dedicated tools programmers as well. So we um it's not enabled for this we turned it off before this but we actually built uh, our content server thing which allows us if we use it but we're not for the beta to make live changes to the design of the game because when you run the game your game actually contacts our content server and says hey what's the basic json data for the game and it sends you that data which because it's a really large um download that would mean we could make huge balance changes live to the game without having to ship a um uh you know a new xp or you, you having to yeah and um we could even do it live we could have the central server tell you hey you need to download here's the new json and just change all the values so for streamer realize like wait a minute i oh can make this end game thing for like oh one copper this this doesn't seem right and yep. you're like oh shit, we did that wrong you can literally on the fly just upgrade it to no it's 100 platinum and well, then we turned it off for the beta because we'd never really tested it at scale and yeah. as you'll remember from when i was telling you as we were just about to pump it live i was there's that moment of terror you're like is it really going to work um and it did but you know you don't know that at the time so um yeah but that's huge being able to make balance changes live um would be would be a big deal i'm so glad you're fixing this sack because i was like that doesn't line up I like that you just said to me, remember, Zach, when we were talking just before we pumped it live? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was On nervous. On Twitch, or... <laughs> I was, um... Mr. Dean Rocket, two I, guns I was hauled. feeling good about the In the build, future, will there be additional planets with less real-life creatures? Game looks super interesting, though, and I can't wait to see the other biomes. Oh, you and the team have the done a fantastic process. job. I think you need to look gotcha. at the one. Yeah, there you go. You almost Bump. did it. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I'll ask him. Because we didn't think about beams when we started this project. And so this raid is... Oh, this session is 21 hours. Is that correct? Days. Uh, it's uh, days. days. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, days. Are you planning on doing any scripted things along those days? In Will things change? Like dynamically um probably not because we've realized that people get really frustrated when they run out of time and lose their uh character yeah i think if you look at the bottom one um sack you can get it you might also mm, find gotcha. you, if you build a wall beside it and build off it that might help you sorry i'm just watching Zach struggle with the beam <laughs> placement <laughs> struggling with my shaft break i love that happens video the best of things us. burning you're like like, beat the shaft, beat the shaft, or something like that. <laughs> this support shaft was on fire, so I shafted uh, here. Actually, I think if you build a wall, because you can always remove oh, it later. If you build a wall under that other beam, oh, God. you'll be able to build the diagonal one against it, if that makes sense. I keep leaving the planet. Okay. It's 
just like we've copied Ark too closely. In Ark, you often have to build something so what that you can that? build something off it. Leave my wood. No, anyone can leave the planet at night. <gasps> I'm getting chased by a bear. I'm getting chased by a bear. Oh, God. I found... Jump oh. over a cliff. <laughs> I don't know where you are. I am. Um, the bear can climb rocks. Oh yeah, we did a lot of nav. It's a cyber bear. Nav -wish work. I'm dead. <laughs> oh my god. There's a, a, a bug with the nav mesh. Uh, the uh, drop pods don't update the nav mesh. How have you found all of these intricate bugs and like seven hours what, I do yeah no, you're, you're right so yeah yeah we, we did see that one um yeah there's we had we had even more stuff dealing with nav mesh and recast is real hard like yeah it's, it's, it's super difficult but yeah that's one that's um that's still there god damn it that bear fucks you up oh you did, can i find Ray's you I, I can revive you yeah if you look on the map you'll see where his body is and then he can sort of guide you on Oh yeah. Have you have you respawned or are you still dead? No, no, I'm, I'm just spectating dead. you. Yeah. Okay, one sec. You're gonna have arrows. to fight a bear. How many arrows does a bear take? He, uh, you gotta get him in the head. Okay. If at only... night, I've got to fight a bear at night. Yeah, no big deal. Thanks, Brie. <laughs> Sorry about that. I went on a I'm bit of a wonder. Oh, too. There's something that I've been crafting some in the place. There should be a full tank in that in the house. Can you make a torch, Zach? No, I didn't get the recipe. Got it. The graphics are really good, aren't they? I like the color schemes. But there's no... I don't know. It looks really cool. So they didn't have Sacriel to come and save you? Sorry, Baz. You get fucked up by a bear too. <laughs> no matter what game is, you're always finding ways to die in the blue. You're out of arrows. I wasn't in. I wasn't in the blue. Oh shit! You're right. I thought I just made a bunch. Can bears go on water? Through water? They can swim. Yep. Oh my god. It was funny because who was I watching? Was it Bikeman? Who was, he did the, just instinctually did the video game thing where he just jumped on a rock. And then the bear runs up the rock and he's like, oh my god. <laughs> I did the same. Am I better behind? Are you on my body or near my body? Yeah. Yeah, go, go to your yeah, you'll have to 9 go degrees right now. And there's some rocks there. Watch, be careful of the bear. You must have looked on the ground. On your Super right now, these rocks. I think I was jumping on these, it looks like. I see to grab some rocks, like I'm gonna run out of boxing and die. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm to, I'm to your 90 degrees right now, lay on the floor. You see my body. You see me? He's just getting some oxygen. Oh, nice. Divine underscore uh, psycho gifted a tier one sub to occasional what? underscore scam. I'm getting trolled. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> oh, oh no, it's, a, it's only a wolf. It's running into my body in between the rocks. Yeah, it's only a wolf. It's right, yeah, right below you there. Yep. Combat knife will keep that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in between the rocks in front of you there now. Ow! Right. What keeps happening? We get back to the bridge of safety. Yeah. How do I get my... Oh, bear, 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 bear. Run, 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 run. I'm dead again! <laughs> <laughs> That beer is making a beeline for you. Combat knife, combat knife. Oh, oh there's a wolf there. Oh, he's so dark. There's a wolf there as well. The wolf got me. You got him, no. you got him. Oh. There's a wolf like behind him or something. No, oh. he was so close with that. You got the beer. Yeah, I killed the bear. How did you kill the bear? He, he got nice. like, the head three times, then I shanked it off yeah. a tree. 
okay. got three crit hits on its head, and then um, and then the rest he did with his combat knife. Was, it was pretty awesome. I thought you were going to get away with that, and it was some revenant level shit. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, so when you respawn, you come back in. But can we go and get our bodies if we respawn? No, no, they belong to Icarus. Ah. Uh, okay, so one more minute. It's a survival game. One of us respawns. The other one, one of us come. respawns. Yeah. You can come and grab my body, bro. Oh, if you had a bed down, you could respawn at the bed. Is my body going to be here? No. Hmm. Oh, I want to hear the dropship coming in. So I need to head south, right? None of me. Okay. So I think I took to bed. It's nearly 7 a.m. in the morning. Oh my god. The dude's a grinder. Clone, there's nothing I could do about that. Oh, you're making a fully fledged walled bridge. Wow. I mean, he's just placing the wall so yeah, he can build the beam. Them. Oh, okay. I low key want to build the whole thing and then set it on fire and watch it burn. I can see you running across the bridge of doom. So both of our bodies are gone, yeah, for, for sure. One of them is. Mine's, I'm still dead here, so you can revive me. Oh, yeah, okay. Next to the Bear of Doom. Oh, God. Maybe we could put the bodies in. Um, because then it becomes a, an adventure to go recover it. Right? Oh, thank you. Uh, I um, guess. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it would re really remove the how scary it is to lose your body because you might have like steel equipment and stuff and you're like oh no i'm gonna have to make it again and yeah you just run back and grab it we want it to be punishing you know it's supposed to be um yeah Good one. I didn't think about it i mean one thing you could do is maybe just rng 50 percent of the loot on the body and just throw it so when you get back to your body you don't know what's going to be mm. left there's some cool stuff but i'm not going to tell you it hi Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some cool, cool stuff we can do tech-wise. Be pretty fun. I want the bodies right. to turn into zombies and then stand and then attack the teammates. No, Chris. No. <laughs> no no zombies. zombies. <laughs> <laughs> and I want them to run into walls and then trap the player between the wall and the uh, zombie and die instantly. <laughs> well, mod zombies are okay, just not standalone zombies. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> That is true. Standalone zombies is so much worse than mods. Uh, from the bottom? Right from the bottom? Of the wall? If I get battered by a bear again, I'm going to lose my oh, mind. Yeah, it goes off the, that point there. Um, what about if you place a wall underneath the beam that you're trying to place off? Yeah, underneath that beam. And then try to build off. You lose everything you had? Yeah, but you retain your skill tree, Might right? Might have to remove the other beam first, though. So you can build things again. Oh. You just need to learn the. You just need to find the materials. You hit it. You hit it. It was there. So you don't have to. You don't have to do all this tech tree so stuff again. So invested in this now. But you lose. You lose what was on your body. Okay, uh, Quack Sunsol, Volpine, yes, thanks. Ever. Divine, game thanks for the gifted sub. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you, dudes. Thank you. You do actually have ramp variations, too. I don't know whether you have um, them unlocked. Oh, it's a little doggy. Animals actually use your bridges as well. It's pretty funny. Oh dear. I break. Have you seen this yet? This is if you kill a raccoon or whatever this is. I 
I'm going. I hate, I'm... The, I hate the raccoons, man. They're not cannon. Oh. What do you think? What do you think about me and your handbag? That's <laughs> <laughs> cool, right? That is lovely. Yeah, Paris Fashion Week. <laughs> <laughs> People are gonna throw like red paint at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One thing I've noticed with people saying is, why can't the humans breathe the atmosphere, but the animals can? Like yeah, just... so, no, so the, um, the rough theory is, uh, presumably people have seen Alien Covenant, and when I first saw Alien Covenant, I was like, why did the people land on this unknown planet and not wear any personal protective equipment? So, Icarus was this failed terraforming planet, right? It was um, actually not called Icarus at the time. Um, it got nicknamed Icarus by the staff because of everything that went wrong with it while they were trying to terraform it. And what was the symbol of this giant sort of uh, success story rapidly became ruined by bitter infighting between different parties and factions involved with the, you know, and countries that were involved with the terraforming of Icarus. So they were using the technology that was used to solve the climate crisis on planet Earth and done all the way in this, in this planet to modify it slightly for humans. But what they didn't count on was the exotics, which is what you're there to get. So you know how, like, uh, a back. lot of the semi-interesting um, technologies that people talk about for fast and light travel, they usually involve exotic matter. And so the idea is, well, they discovered it on this planet and that's what caused the terraforming to fail. So we don't know yet how that reacts with people. And that's why um, you're wearing um, like helmets and that. Because there's, we're just not sure about the atmospheric composition at all. Right. Hmm. Hmm, yes. I've been getting mm. into my astrophysics lately. So the exotic material, is that meant to be some kind of negative energy exactly. material that can fold space-time so you can make wormholes? Yep. Like a einstein rosen bridge. You imagine if they discovered that somewhere, right? And that's the idea, is it's like a modern gold rush. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why you don't have stuff. You know, you, you, you were a bunch of... You imagine they discover this, and there's a bunch of people in orbit who were there to terraform or maintain the terraforming satellites and stuff like that. They don't have equipment. They don't have stuff. They're just trying to figure it out while Earth gets ready to send people to come and get this stuff. So it's mm -hmm. all very ad hoc, and that's why we called it Icarus. The first part of it, Icarus First Cohort. You're the first group of people going on the planet, so you're supposed to experience it and... Um, you know, figure it out. That's cool. Yeah, cool. One thing you could steal from Subnautica is Play that game, a storage no, container. If you're if, if you're if you're saying that the end game tech and the exotics is something that might be able to make wormholes, make a storage container that's that's basically a mini wormhole that's like global storage. So you can put one in one place, one in another. Make it really, hmm. really expensive to make. But then you can, you know, go to your mining colony, mine a bunch of shit, put it in that container, run back to your other base and take it out of that container without having to carry it back. But make it really prohibitively expensive so you can only use it for certain solutions. That, that, could, cool. work, that could work well for our outposts um, because, you know, the outposts are a smaller area. Um, and, you know, I didn't want uh, trees and rocks to regrow on it. This is a bit controversial because a lot of the... the the design team did they were like well no the trees should regrow um but we could get around that by um, um is it time break is it time uh let me watch from a distance <laughs> breaks like i want to watch from a safe distance please yeah how does the fire spread like that do you have to just walk in so, it it's it's made um, using actual energy values. Uh, this actually caused us a bit of problem early on because it was very difficult to balance. But the the fire actually adds energy to stuff because we have a temperature system, right? So it all kind of you know works together as it basically releases energy and adds it and spreads it round. Mm -hmm. But we had to sort of fudge it a bit to make it sort of feel right. 
But it's pretty cool when you see it with the forest fires and stuff. We're still tweaking it. You can just imagine driving across a bridge while it's on fire. Yeah. Does, does the fire compromise its structural integrity? Like a pillar oh, yeah. that's halfway on fire, is it less strong? Of course, a lot so of damage. Dope. Could you imagine building a bridge over a canyon to a place where you need to go and get these minerals and then getting griefed by a team? <laughs> Setting fire to it from the other side? Oh, what if you wait till you make it? If it's a massive bridge, you're halfway across and they sneak out to both ends and set both ends on fire. <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble for talking about PvP, but absolutely, I agree. Like, definitely. But the big thing I learned from Daisy, you got to get the basics right. got to get the basics right. Nothing if you don't have the basics right. Did you imagine when you were making the mod, did you imagine where it was going to end up? Did you kind of know it was, was going to be a, a, like, yeah, did, was there a moment where it clicked and you thought, oh my God? It was. It was when we did uh, the, it became that YouTube series. Oh, I can't even remember. This is like 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> it was with the Shack Tech guys um, because I was working on Armor 3 at the time and um, I said to Dyslexi, he was supposed to play try out armor 3 and he couldn't because the multiplayer just didn't work and i was hired as a multiplayer designer so what was i going to do and i was like dude i've got this mod i've been working on you know do you guys want to play it and um i'm just watching sex face it's, i think he's a bit of a pyromaniac actually <laughs> this explains the fireworks at his wedding now <laughs> um but yeah it was then um that i was like yeah but see this fire here we can do this because it's session based because you're not going to lose necessarily everything. You've still got your stuff banked and all that. Um, you might still have other characters and stuff like that. We can destroy the place you're at. Yeah, it was a good question about it. There was a moment. Um, uh, and that's why I think if you're developing a game or something, you do need to plan for success. Yeah. You need to be ready for it. Because, you know, I just started maxing out my credit cards, paying for servers, and, you know, making sure I dotted the I's and crossed the T's on everything. Um, yeah. Have you thought of a linear system for the fire, like like the fire, but that affects, I imagine, the end game you build, like, metal platforms and stuff? But, you know, like, in RimWorld, they have those mechanites, which are, like, nanobots that consume metal. It'd be cool to get mechanites, so you look at the metal, you can see them, like, skimmering along the surface, and you need to use some things to, like, drive them away. That would be cool. So yeah, and the tech tree, you can see we actually have, we have corrugated iron, and we have glass, and the, um, oh, and the sound of the rain on those. I don't know if you've noticed the sound gets muffled and stuff properly, and the special sound that gets played when there's like rain on the stuff. I'm getting no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. watching your building on fire. You know, it looks even better if you're running epic, by the way. Need to get. I'm. You know what? I'm going to complain to Nvidia that they need to give more awesome GPUs to streamers. Bullshit. If you want to get me quad 3090s, I will gladly. Take oh my well, god! All the streamers. You guys should be running. You guys should just be given GPUs. This is nuts. They want to sell all this good stuff. It, it... I have a 3090 Great. to be fair. Okay. Can I change my stuff at the minute? I can't. Can I? I'm on high. You can't change it to epic when you're in session. Yeah. No, yeah, you can't. Um, when it rains as a biome, does that stop fire? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. That would be another potential cool end game tech. Would be oh, 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 some oh, kind oh, of oh, weather oh. conditioning. Weather, like, influencer. And you could actually influence Please don't kill me. weather to become rain when you've got a fire. It is a cool idea, actually. Some use, use a lot of power. Yeah, maybe it just fires something up into the atmosphere. And then you look up and you see the like, the clouds roll in and then it starts to rain. It'd be a really cool mm. way. Oh man, and we, we use the latest tech that um, Unreal provided for a lot of the cloud stuff and that. Uh, Epic have actually been real cool to work with as well. They'll be like, hey, we got this new feature. Look at this. <laughs> just, shy, just waving in front of you. Look at this new shiny thing, Dean. Yep. I'm, I'm on doing fire that with still. Five. Now. Hmm.
Wait, has it burnt the... It's burnt some of the things under the water, but not others. Yeah, because they're in the water. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, depending on how they... It can burn a little bit, I think, under there. I love that you Should guys built the thing and then just burned it down. Yeah, I don't know why. Well, unfortunately, I have to actually go because I've got a um, thing to do at 12. So Yeah, and I think the sun is just getting up. It is. Someone said it's 7 p.m. Uh, 7 a.m. where you are. Have you stayed up all night uh, or have you just got up? I have, actually. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> Time and to you... go for a run. Jesus. Perfect time for a runner. Well, a I had a I had a cake of chocolate last night. What is your today? diet? It's either like one extreme super healthy or mega unhealthy. Yeah. He just eats like yeah. an avocado. I don't normally cake. do that. And then birthday cake, yeah. I don't normally <laughs> do that, but it's like lockdown and we just launched the game that we've gone like the basis of for like five years. So I figured I can have a cake of chocolate. Yeah. But yeah, I appreciate you guys trying it out. Um and uh, yeah, I'll try to catch up uh, on, your, on your thoughts sometime if there's some stuff you don't want to say publicly in that. But just remember, you don't always have to like stuff just because uh, I'm watching. I was originally going to be se secret in your guys' chats, but yeah. Oh, cool. I appreciate Thanks you answering playing, questions and stuff. Us, yeah. Awesome. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks, Dean. Uh, Take later. care, bro. Enjoy your yeah. run and cake. Thanks, man. That was Did cool. Thanks, Dean. Appreciate it. Thank you, mate. Right, catch you later, bro. Later, Thank dude. You. Have Bye fun. Yeah. Take it easy. Bye. Bye, Bye. Dude, that was super cool. Thanks, Dean, mate. Have a good day, pal. Appreciate you coming in and answering questions. A cake of chocolate is kiwi for family-sized block of chocolate. Oh, right. Not, so not a birthday cake. Just a just a bar of chocolate. All oh, right. Okay. Curzon. Hey, thanks. Curz zero N gifted a tier one Curse sub to rocket two guns. N. They have given 224 gift subs in the channel. Thanks, Kerr0N. Oh, just a bar of chocolate? I thought you'd had a whole cake. I thought, all right, that is a celebration. <laughs> Don't you know. <laughs> Thanks, Dean. Have a really good day, mate. I do really appreciate you dropping by. Thank you for that. I'll be straight. Don't know if Dean's still there. I can see that getting boring. That that right now getting boring pretty quick. Because you, you, don't, you don't have a lot to do, right? There's wolves, there's bears. There's deers, there's, the, the animals are limited. Um, but I did, before Dean even said anything, I, I got the, the the impression that he was trying to, they're trying to get the basics down, right? And I think, on a, on a side note, I think Dean will be, Dean will be even more conscious of that from Daisy and the criticisms that he took from Daisy um, over the years. So I feel like, I feel like he'll really want to get the basics down before going into all the advanced stuff, going into all the crazy stuff. And and I kind of got that impression. So I imagine when each beta weekend drops and more and more content comes into it, people learn more about the game and, and how it's going to play and maybe the maybe a bit of storyline to it, then it'll get really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you're still there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, like I say, I'm sure you'll feel need, the need to get that right more than anything at the minute, right? But there's a whole different, there's a whole like load of balancing that you have to do. Like I said, for solo people and people that are going to go in with a four-man squad, you're going to have to make it fun for everyone. And then difficulties arise from that because you can't make it too easy for a solo because then the teamwork element kind of erodes, right? Because then everyone's, it, it's too easy for a team. But then you can't make it too easy for, uh, uh, you can't make it too difficult because then it'll be, mega difficult for a solo so you have to the, the balancing with that is is going to be difficult i would say have you noticed the shared exp oh well, with me and sack you get shared X, exp for playing with friends oh no i didn't notice that that's cool i also think it's important that people do criticize stuff and re review stuff critically games don't improve unless we pick them to pieces yeah are you doing it sorry before you go on your run are you doing this every two weeks like religiously or is it are you just saying every couple of weeks as in kind of loose terms Are you, so like it's going to be open this weekend next weekend it's not weekend after it's going to be open it's set in stone every two weeks and there's going to be more content specific goals honestly that's a it's a really good way really good way of doing things someone earlier described icarus as a first person rim world 
<laughs> that'd actually be really cool it's hard to design something if you don't want to get feed it's also hard having a lot of yes man around you as well in it do you know what i mean you don't want to be you don't want to be told everything's great and whatnot when it when the general population of the player base feels otherwise you know next one is storms with crazier storms and more content unlocked yeah weekend after is arctic biome then desert okay next weekend will be again beta break i buy the deluxe and really enjoyed it so not next weekend the weekend every two weeks not next weekend the weekend after that when do you have you got a date for full release or do you not want to commit to anything this early have you got a date in mind uh, it, like publicly or are you not saying oh 20th of november that's fucking that's fucking soon <laughs> That's soon, right? People can refund during the beta. That's good as well. Uh, we, we spoke about that on stream a while back. Because um, you changed something, right? You went from completely free to play to paid, but you can refund it whenever you want or after a certain amount of hours or something, right? The Manchester Biome will be... <laughs> Manchester Biome, everyone spawns in with guns. Yeah, we did because we couldn't figure out how to do free to play without making the game terrible. Yeah. You, you, you guys, you guys are, you're making this game to make money, right? You, you, you're a business at the end of the day. You got to make money. So if you go free to play, you're going to have to have skins, potential pay to win stuff that impacts the gameplay. So yeah, I get that. Not saying you can't do that. I'm just saying... You lose a lot of income, don't you? I guess loot boxes and all that, yeah. But it's but that I mean it's that's one that's one thing you can do. That's one thing a lot of games companies do subsidize, it, and it's it's like it's a way games companies make money, right? I don't care if it makes that much money. I don't care if it's I I, I care if it's received well. Yeah. When do we get the break skins? <laughs> so long as it makes its money back, I'm happy. No, that's fair. That's fair to say. Can you add a rusty Renault Clio? No, don't do that. I'm happy that someone with a keen eye for details leading the design of a survival game. Yeah. I really like the physics. The physics are, the physics look good. We will be doing paid stuff with content creators to support their role in the community. Not till the game is not poop. <laughs> it's not poop. Yeah, if you need, do you know when characters die? If you need anyone to do a death sound, I'll fall off my bike again, and you can just take that sound. I've made a good, pretty, pretty good sound. <sighs> Content creators have a massive role in how games are made. Released now. Uh, well, that's another thing. You'll know that better than anyone, right? I mean, Daisy was an uh, an incredible game. I still prefer the mod over, over standalone, really. Um, but. But the way that blew up from streamers playing it, the hype around it, you had the perfect storm of the like the time, right? It, 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 streaming was just becoming prominent. Like the quality was just about good enough to, to really watch things. Um, yeah. I'm not saying without streaming, Daisy wouldn't have done well because it probably would have, but Daisy would have done. Daisy did amazingly through streamers, right? So yeah, um, with the big streamers especially, do you know what I mean? It is, it's very important, I think, for studios to to factor them into things. YouTubers too, yeah. Any form of media like that is is very important. I don't think you can release a game these days without thinking about without thinking about how it is for streamers to play. Like stream sniping on a game, just say the stream sniping issue, when you get Doc and Shroud and they're Playing, they're playing the game to like 50k viewers and they get stream sniped so then they go off and stop playing it straight away you lose like 100k viewers straight away 100,000 people might not buy your game because two people have just been like forced off the game so uh, but there's not really much stream sniping if you need a rough issue. fisherman voice I'm your guy Kick up. <laughs> or even someone that apparently sounds Scottish I'm your man Awesome work so far on the game Dean and the rest of the devs can really tell how passionate you are about games and I enjoy your talks. Thanks, my Yeah, it's been good. I used to watch you do the same with, with Sack on Daisy. Why was Day why was why was uh 
Why was it a wasted opportunity, Dean? Why'd you say it was a wasted opportunity? I couldn't adapt and learn myself to make use of it. To make use of Twitch? Oh, I couldn't adapt myself fast enough to make the best use of it, of streaming? It's me. Do you know what I, video I watched today? I watched I watched Mr. Moon and the one where he's showing a, a, a girl around town doing a realtor thing and keywords in it. I watched that this morning, randomly. We know and saw it. We, I wrote a design for Daisy Arena, which was basically PUBG. The Survivor games kind of went that way, but never really, never really took off. I mean, it kind of did. The view numbers were insane for it. Lyric, Lyric came out of that pretty much. So things did happen, but yeah, sort of a meltdown. I mean, yeah, I, I, I have a, I, again, I have a feeling where you probably, you made a mod, you realized it was going to be successful. And then all of a sudden you went from a guy making a mod in his spare time, probably thinking that maybe I'll make a few quid to a guy with an insane amount of pressure on his shoulders, actual millions of people pestering you and a whole amount of uh, a big studio and all that to handle like i can imagine the pressure might have got to you a little bit scary exciting and all that the good thing is you probably learn well, you definitely have learned a lot from that and you know how to take that into this game right so the way you're approaching this game is gonna be miles better i literally woke i woke up and there was Five million in my bank account, and I was running a team of a hundred people in a country I didn't speak the language. Yeah, I can see why things got stressful. Entire life changes a single day. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the game it was like a victim of its own success as well because the engine just the engine that you were trying to develop it on wasn't really wasn't really up to scratch was it to do all that stuff on it so you were like you were you you were forced in a corner maybe where you didn't want to be yeah yeah a lot of pressure i really i, I really do hope uh this one goes a lot a lot smoother and you don't feel you don't feel that amount of pressure you know i guess you don't feel that amount of pressure now the way you're talking doesn't sound like you do dean i i i mean i I kind of felt it with Daisy when when you left. Although people had, you'd influence people there. It didn't have the same feel, and it might maybe didn't go in the same direction as people were hoping it was gonna go when when you left the the Daisy team. And it was the same when when Pu left, when Player Unknown left the team at uh, PUBG Corp. It was the same then. Like when the guy when the guy with the ideas or its original baby when it's his baby. When that guy leaves the studio, things just kind of... The two games that I've, I've loved, like legit with all my heart, loved and been passionate about and that have made my career, for those two games, both the both the heads or the guy, the babies, it was, both of them have left. And then the games just kind of petered out, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. The core problems with the standalone versus the mod are all my mistakes. Hmm, I wouldn't, I don't know, I wouldn't say that. Would you, why'd you say that? It's not like you, you coded it, right? Do you mean it was just your vision was maybe too big for the engine? But I wouldn't say that's, that's your mistakes though, is it? I would say that the engine wasn't good enough for what you wanted it to be. I had the power of the time to make other decisions. Eh, yeah, maybe. You might not answer this. Were you the guy that, you the guy that made, made the decision to go down the we needed to do the new engine route that must have been your decision right and by that time you're how are you doing the signed, arcane elite signed to armor you can't go then uh, you can't then go and say i think this needs to be an unreal or whatever not the en new engine route really okay i think what me and rory said at the time all we still do is if you just slightly polished the mod version, I think people would have been happy with that. And then you could have maybe just gone on to make Daisy 2 or something, if that makes sense. I don't know. You wanted to try Unreal really, but it was really happy to I was really happy to go over there, I think. If I wanted they would have done whatever I wanted, I pushed it. 
We started with slightly polishing the mod, but then War Z, and I freaked out. <laughs> yeah. That game never did anything though. With hindsight, there was there was there was no need to even freak out about that because the War Z's survival mode was like rubbish. And then the BR came, and then that's what made it take off, right? Not the survival. I don't think the survival was even played by anyone. Mod had atmosphere, dark feeling with spookiness at all times. You never felt safe roaming a forest. I think that was because of that was because of how small the map was in relative relative terms to standalone. The player count you made interactions more frequent, and yeah, just the density of players was a lot closer, right? In the mod, people were easier to see because the graphics weren't as good. So you couldn't hide as well. In in Daisy standalone, you could hide so well. The map was massive. It just decreased all. We needed events. That's why the crash sites that went down were so important because we needed events that pulled players in. Rather than just letting everyone just walk, roam around, we needed the, these little dynamic events that pulled players into each other. I'm really proud of it, but I think to get better, you have to look through at the things you can do better. Really, I just, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's my it's my favorite game of all time, mate. You have you have made a game that fully changed fully changed my life. Daisy Daisy standalone uh, Daisy mod not standalone Daisy mod is the best game I've ever played, hands down. PUBG's close second. I always wonder how well Unreal would handle a game like Daisy. It's so vast with loot pools and AI infusion does give incredible frames. To be fair, what they have done on the new engine is is mad. You, you do get like 200 FPS constantly, right? You do get 200 FPS a lot of the time in, in Daisy. They have done really well. It's just, it's just very, just feels a bit cumbersome. Never forget the early days of the mod. Honestly, felt like a game sort of it's a time completely blew me away. The whole time I had the game at 15 FPS. Making the mod was the best dev time for me. The standalone, not so much. You were, you work in the army though, right? You were working in the army when you made the mod. You would have had no pressure whatsoever, right? It would have been nice. Yeah, yeah. It's like once it becomes a real job and once this pressure is, uh, and deadlines, you, you lose kind of freedom and you must feel, you must feel mad and just stressed. Doing the dev was amazing. Best community engagement too. Yeah. How long did you work on the standalone for? Was it about a year and a half? 2013 a year and a bit maybe sub events yeah yeah the sub events are really good two years the sub events were amazing me and uh me and john right sack didn't i don't think sack did him that much with us but me and and Gotti did really really good like funny sub sundays put a lot of time and thought into them yeah i only wanted to do one but they offered me a crazy amount of money for the second year I don't blame you. Don't blame you. Daisy mod was just simply groundbreaking. The fact that so many games tried to emulate it but never had the same feel. Yeah. I think that's what happened. That's what Armour did really well was the environment and the atmosphere that the, the that, that create created was it, still not not another environment has come the same. Like come anywhere near the same as that. Kind of for atmospheric kind of like the weight it put on your shoulders, just the environment and the weight that it made you, way it made you feel was just. No other game's done that to me. Like a uh, PUBG, the the maps Erangel's great, but it doesn't make me feel scared. Whereas Armor 2 Daisy on Chernus made me feel scared for some reason. We want to look at Milsim again one day. We have to learn and build a studio. Yeah. You don't need to build another studio, do you? You've already built one. <laughs> Wasn't there like a British Bulldog? Yeah, there was, yeah. Played some black with you, just unlocked a memory for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a British Bulldog. I think one team ran at another team. Also, we had like John's John and his subs hold a compound, and then me and my subs had to assault it. And then I think the next the next week we reversed it. It was good. This one is one to expand. Oh, okay. This game has really helped us develop skills with serious multiplayer. Okay. Shit, I'm looking. The cricket and the rust beetles scuttled among the nettles of the sage thicket. 
Ramonos, amigos, he whispered, and threw <laughs> the busted leather flint craw over the loose weave of the saddle cop. Charlie, and they rode on ago. in the friscalating dusk light. Thank you, Lefty, you bastard. You saying, Dean, with you saying this, this game's really helped us develop skills with serious multiplayer, and then you coming out with a PvE kind of raid based game? Too good to do PvP netcode? You have to. You have to completely master PvE effortless. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. No, you made us run all the way around the map out of bounds and you got <laughs> got wrong off Johnny who was livid. <laughs> oh no. Oh I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. You had to go and get all your gear, didn't you? Like throughout the week, you guys had to play Daisy on the sub server to gear up and we'd be like right this week we'll do a cowboy and western themed one so we'll do revolvers and we'll do revolvers and um repeaters and then you'd all look for revolvers and repeaters on the i on was the honking server. my horn in chano and picking up people and getting shot at you were one of the people that got in break it's <laughs> ultimately how i found your channel and subbed you promised a youtube video out of it but it never came Still here nearly oh. seven years later. Sorry, I'll get right on that, mate. <laughs> I'll get right on it. Right, I'm gonna go. Yo, Dean, thanks for thanks for being a uh, just super super honest and nice. Appreciate you talking. It's really nice to nice to see you in chat, mate. Uh, and it's uh, an honor and a privilege for real to be able to talk to you. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Four weeks to meet up. Oh God. Yeah. Appreciate you, Dean. Thank you, mate. See you, everyone. Make sure to sub to break. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Have a good run. Get down the gym, mate. Right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go and get some food and see the dogs. Thank you guys for being lovely. I appreciate you watching me play a different game. Hopefully, we'll play some more of it. Um, day off tomorrow, back on Monday. Okay? Thank you for being lovely. Don't forget to follow if you're first time here. Um, YouTube content's going out. Uh, I'm going to post a TikTok in a minute. TikTok. <clears throat> Bank hall, yeah. 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 Right. Have a good one. Take care of this, guys. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon, all right? Thank you for everything you do for me. You guys are lovely. Appreciate it. Let's do it. Bye-bye.